Ooh. Welcome back! To Shady Harbor. With me, Little Fox! We have a day off here in Australia because it is uh, Anzac Day, the day that uh, in, is made in re remembrance for um, the Anzac soldiers in who went to war in World War One and World War Two. I believe that Anzac was World War One too. Yeah, sucks that they got duped into that. But in any case, shall we pull up some snacks, have a little chill, and just uh, play a game? Hmm. Cause that's what I'm gonna do. Testing, testing, testing. Right. It appears as though everything is working, <laughs> as it does. Mm -hmm. Um, what was I checking? Yeah. I'm just going to give myself a, a, a quick sound check. I'm just going to give my... And the sound check worked. Yay! Alright. Now, I believe... Last time we left off, we were... Clearing the corruption in Lantern Cave. Which is not down that way, but that is where I got the masks. Or the hats. So I got all these cute hats now. <sighs> and that creepy hat. Ooh, what's this? A fox symbol is marked on this old camping gear. Ah, uh, yes, he lost his brothers. And then he fell backwards from a cliff. Interesting. Yeah. Trying to remember the buttons. Whee. I do like the backflip. The backflip's pretty sick. Monkey Gamer from the Moon, welcome! Welcome back! How you doing? Why is that not on my screen? Yay! It's working now. Woo! Just gonna look for other stuff that I might have missed. Who knows? I'm still no have no idea why my character is doing what she's doing in this game, but it's pretty. <gasps> oh, it's pretty. So pretty. I do like that they changed the camera angle uh, or the aperture size or whatever, however you call it. My book reading. Um. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned it last time, but uh, I got to the um, the third chapter of um, uh, Kropotkin's uh, Mutual Aid, and it's just like, <laughs> it's, 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 but uh, yeah, I still need to listen to some more of that. Ow. Oh yeah, I forgot those things hurt. Two, three.
God, not fast enough. Am I missing one? Where's the other one then? What was this? You just got done with that? Oh, okay. Over there. Send it over there. We shall destroy the rot. Oh, I mean, the, not the rot. The rot is the good guys. Dang it! Whee! It's over here. Oh, it's a meditation spot. That's fucking pretty. Oh, I wanna go to somewhere like that in real life. Nah. Now, remind me, How to Blow Up a Pipeline, that one's a fictional book? Or is it a biopic? Misses, but oh, that guy's all right. Never mind myself how to ow. I can lock onto these, can't I? Yes, I can. There's more. I'm trying to remember what the um, extra attacks that I have in this game. What? If I hit his hand. Oh, very nice. Ooh. Release! Oh, yeah. You must feed! Oh, I can't use that yet. <laughs> Got him. Yay! 
Yay! And for reward, we get food! Did I miss anything back here? It's not fiction. Right, where did that what was that? Oh, it was that one. It's not fiction. Huh. I always thought it was. I remember someone telling me that it wasn't actually a story that happened in real life. I don't know much about it actually. Is it like a narrative or is it more like guerrilla warfare as in like an instruction manual? Oh, hello. What's behind here? Oh yeah, I can check that out. Maybe the movie, not the book. Oh. Press X while drawing my bow. A rot hammer. R. Press right. Nope, that didn't work. Draw arrow, rot arrow. Whoa, cool. Nope. Ah, there we go. More friends? Hey, hey! Yay! Rotten to the core! Bad to the bone! Dangerous down there. I know, right? Why do they call them rot? I would have thought that everything, it, like the corruption, was the rot. Oh gosh. Oh no. Uh oh. It's saving. Oh, boss fight. Dangerous as fuck. Shit, he can jump. Whoa! Woo! Yep. Where is he going? Where'd he go? 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 Okay, there he is. Run and hit! 
Running and hit. Run and smack. Ah! Alright. Um. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Damn! Oh, come on, that got him. That, that got it. Oh gosh, oh gosh. really makes you feel like you've succeeded when you win a battle. <laughs> wow. Huh. That was so cool. Wait a second, what? What is that? It didn't feel easy. <laughs> Damn it. I guess it was, I guess they did it without, without, like, dying once. It definitely gave me the feeling of something that I achieved, so. The boss fights are really fun, like, I haven't, I haven't enjoyed boss fights like this since, like, Zelda, honestly. I mean, it's nowhere near, narratively, it's nowhere near as epic as, like, a Zelda game, but each battle that I have actually feels like something that, you know how, like, in a lot of games you'll feel like you're just, like, battling hordes of enemies? Like, yes, you're doing the same here, but at the same time, I'm like... Each battle feels like, like, an ordeal of some kind. I'm always like thinking, oh shit, what's good? What are they gonna throw throw at me this time? Oh no! This looks dangerous. Another one. Oh. I guess I don't want to be in the darkness? Maybe? Well, there's a spot for it? Yep. I totally got that. Oh, I did. Wait, I back up? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that one was far away. Oh, things are getting dangerous. Um, oh, back this way? Oh, there we go. Yeah. 
found Taro's lantern. He must have Scarlet lost it Nexus? searching for the children. Ooh. Bring the relics to the fallen tree. It's time to help Taro find peace. Oh, it's time to face Taro. Feels like there's a lot more to this game. Hey, it's a new hat! Yay! Pinecone hat! For my rotten boys! For the lads! And I suppose, like, I guess they're more non binary than anything else. I wish lad was a non binary word. Such a fun word to use. Oh, this is where I came. Dang it! Oh yeah, can I buy anything? Um, how many points do I have for upgrades? Alright, what's this? Ooh, the shield strength would be good. Fire six arrows, yeah. Press quick sweeping attack while sprinting to a powerful overhead attack. And while jumping, press right trigger to do a, a smash attack. Ooh, release a heavy attack with precise timing. Nothing. It's just this spot up here, I think. Yeah. <coughs> Good. I've been like, I, 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 I have trauma from previous video games that make me like explore every friggin' nook and cranny before giving me things. This game is just like trying to place it in like obvious locations, you know. Ah, oh, it's the old cursed chest. Right, where am I going now? Use the the relics to free Taro. Okay. Then we need to go this way. Oh gosh. Whoopsies! <laughs> I guess I have to go around. Oh, 
not what I wanted to do. There we go. Time to buy a hat. Okay, where's the pine cone? Ah, there you are. Yay! There's a whole lot more of them out there though. Oh my gosh, look at them all. Wait, there's outfits? I didn't even see that. Golden rod? Yes, please. I have a golden rod, apparently. There's a golden one. That's so cool. What? There's outfits? <gasps> Shadow. Oh, yes, fuck yes. Wait, what does the original one look like? I actually like the original one better. <laughs> <coughs> but the deluxe stuff looks sick. I am now king of the white! Alright. Am I facing him, like, right in front of the cool tree? Because that would be fucking epic as fuck. What's the cool tree, you ask? This thing. Oh, hello. Hey, guys. I'm going to help Taro now, but it's not safe for you here. Go with Mr. Rusu. I'll find you in Taro's Let's Go with room. Mr. Rusu and play some Osu. Be careful, Kena. I'm going to help Taro now. Oh, Be careful, Kena. I want to talk to the old man. All right, fine. Interact time. It'd be kind of cool to carve a mask out of wood. Kind of want to do that now. Oh, there he is. That's not Taro, that's fucking Guts. Guts in fucking wolf mode, jeez. Oh my gosh. Oh my Got it. Ah. Yeah, I thought that would happen. Woo! And do your long swipe. Whoop! Ow! Shit. Ah, dang it. Wrong timing. I suck at this. Yeah. 
Oh, dang it! What the fuck was that? <laughs> okay, he decided. He just decided the fight was over. Okay. <laughs> oh come on! What the fuck? What the fuck? That's some bullshit right there. Come on! Stop moving about so much! Jeez! Got him! Fucking hell! Finally! I'm oh, fucking angry now. Ow! Why can I not lock on to the guy? Come on, do your thing. That was a bit of weird fucking flex. Where's where's another flower? Damn it! Oh, it's on the other side. Ah, oh, damn. Fuck! Holy shit! Holy shit! Whoa, 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 whoa! What the fuck? What the fuck? This guy is hard to beat. Damn! Got him.
Son of a bitch! Ow! Oh, come on, I can't even see the fucker! No, I can't! Ah. Oh, gosh. It's either locked on, or it won't lock on when I need it to. What happened there? Oh, you fucker! Okay. Uh, yeah. I was trying to jump! I almost had him. <laughs> Let's try again. Oh my gosh! What the fuck? Got him! Finally! Whoa! Don't know what's up with that. Oh! No, he got me. Far out. That was so- that's so annoying, like... I am using the dodge button, I promise! Alright. See, there we go! Come at me, bro. Whoa! Whoa! Alright. That was something I didn't done before. Okay. Really again? Okay. Oh my gosh.
shit! Just ran through it! That's bullshit! Oh my gosh. What the fuck? There must be something I'm missing. About this boss battle. Like... No way to escape that one. No way to escape that one either, apparently. Oh, come on! Come towards me. Oh, I was missing something. Also. Just wait until his light goes back on, I think. Is there any more health? Far out there isn't. Ah! <laughs> oh, come on! Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Close. Money. Oh, that was satisfying as hell. Oh my gosh, that was difficult. That was so much fun. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, again, not since Zelda. Not since Zelda. I'm not talking... I'm talking Majora's Mask Zelda. Like, I haven't actually played much through the village. any of the others. Spirits of wow. the forest. Walk with our people. Guide them on their journey to the mountain shrine. Food away. was running low. Everyone was scared. I never felt so helpless. Saya wanted to stay, but I thought we could go to Rusu for help. I was sure he would know what to do. But something was not right in the woods.
I had never seen Rusu so worried. He sent us back to the village. And I knew we were alone. What the hell, Rusu? I was all that Benny and Saya had what left. What a spirit guide, jeez. I had to protect them. So sweet. Hey, come on. <laughs> Why did he leave them? It happened the next morning. Oh, he's getting some fish, hopefully. Oh, this is him at the mountain. What? The explosion from the mountain shrine covered the land in darkness. It must have been aliens. Must have been. An atomic weapon or something. Oh no! No! Yeah, it's a CIA. Saya! Where are you? No. What happened? Did he get hurt? Oh no, he got up. Yeah. You can do it! You've got this! It lasted for days. <clears throat> I searched everywhere for them. I was their older brother. I was supposed to protect them. Even now, it's hard to forgive myself. Wait, wait, what did he do Tyler, though? Like, he literally walked up to the mountain and he was trying to find food. You care for them? It wasn't his fault. What happened in the village wasn't your fault. Is this toxic masculinity? You will always <laughs> your older brother, and they still need <laughs> No. No, it's good to care about the ones you love. But it helps no one to blame yourself like him. And in death they'll be together forever. Why not? It's okay. You have to go now. Wait, so how did they die? That's what I want to know. I know it's implied that, they, that they're all dead, but... And what about that old fart? You send them back with nothing but a fucking knife. Cute. 
You old fella. Hey! Meditate. Or at least, I, I, this is how you get a new heart. <laughs> new challenges unlocked. I think that the tree looked cooler before, honestly. But that's just me. Alright, let's get those hats. So cool. Oh, this is a cool game. Like, actually, like, it's been a long time since I've played an RPG like this. Ugh. Go. Back to the town. Oh, um, so I, I, I've got um, a few options. We've still got, I've still got um, Pokemon like linked up to the computer, but I also installed uh, Factorio mod. Um, so we could literally go to the moon in Factorio. Well, not just to the moon, but to like other planets. It's, um, what is it called? It is called space. Space. Space exploration mod. Do, 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 do. Space exploration. It's like a complete like um conversion of Factorio. So like not only can you like do the planet, like, how, how it basically changes the game into, like, I guess it has finite uh, size as well, and you can go to different um, planets with, I'm hoping, different enemies, um, and it adds a whole bunch of progression and items and all sorts of shit, which looks really cool. But that is going to be a long, long gameplay. <laughs> Um, and yeah, like, I was also thinking maybe, maybe having a look at, um, some of the stuff. Space imperialism, yes! Actually, they joke about that. Also, one of the cool things is, so you can, like, so in Factorio, Endgame is making rockets, right? Um, but in space exploration, you use those more rockets to go to other planets, um, and you can also create spaceships. So, that sounds interesting. Did I put the bins out? Yes, I did. Good. Uh, but yeah, like, gigantic uh, missiles, check. Um, energy beams, uh, check. Energy beaming to get that power where you need it. Yes, I, I just thought that'd be fun um, at one stage. So at some stage, um, but yeah, just playing it by ear. There's a whole bunch of stuff that it, that um, I could do, including um, React content stuff like that. Oh right, and um, there's a demo for System Shock that I noticed. I don't know if I've I, I I don't think that I knew that there was an actual demo for it that I could play, but I've installed that. So I could, like, boot that up and have a look at it. Also, there's an, another game called Yogsothoth's Yard, which seems pretty weird, and I, 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 like, I like Lovecraftian horror, not Lovecraft himself, um, and it just, this looks like... I thought I'd download the de there was a demo for it, so I thought I'd try it. But uh, in this land where da dragons, elves, and humans coexist, you inherit an abandoned mansion. You need to recruit staffs, including death, dragon, spirit hunter, bioroid maid, to provide hotel services. You can also gather funds through slaughter and dream. Staffs are all objects that can be conquered. What is it? What is it? It looks so weird. Like, what has, got, what has it got to do with Yogg-Sothoth? 
a Yogg-Sothoth and like and like a being which is un incomprehensible fourth dimensional, you know, like universe encompassing being. How to blow up a pipeline official trailer? Oh, there's an official trailer for it. Rapid trailer. How to blow up a pipeline. Boom talk today. Teaching myself to make a homemade blasting cap. And if this works, it'll be step one in making our own improvised explosive. I disavow. Might be headed to Texas for the winter. What's in Texas? This project. What kind of project? Trying to stop the pipeline from being built on my property. Poisons the air, water. Damn, this place is sick. You guys cooking meth in here? You ready to start working? We have to show how vulnerable the oil industry is by hitting something big. Michael, what do you think the odds are blow yourself up? I don't really care. You know, we could blow the pipe at the hilltop, keep the oil from leaking. You're not actually thinking. I'm not thinking about it. I'm doing it. What if y'all do structural damage? Structural damage is kind of the point. This is destruction of federal property. Terrorism. American Empire calls us terrorists, then we're doing something right. If you're seeing this, let those who profit from mass death know their properties will be trashed. Three, two, one. They will defame us and claim this. Just, just, just so you know, like judging your own, like whether you're doing the right or wrong thing based on, like whether you're and the person you, that you put, the group that you perceive as your enemy is the, uh, uh, it, it isn't a good way to judge your own, like, moral compass. Like, you should be challenging yourself uh, more than you are a challenging. Um, your opponent. This was violence or vandalism, but this was justified. This was an act of self-defense. Oh my gosh, it's so fucking American. Like, literally, like, the whole idea of, like, castle doctrine, self-defense, you know, like, that sort of thing. Like, I'm not, like, saying that it's right or wrong there, but it's just very, very, very apparent. You know what I mean? Also, getting the shaft as always. Chang, what are, what's wrong? How are you getting the shaft? Or are you hanging out with shaft? Like, you know, the the cool dude from the, the movie. Sister Minnie. <gasps> Sister Minnie. Hello everybody, we are doing our first YouTube video. I did not film intro because I don't care. But anyways, Sister Minnie today, she's going to have a bath. Are you ready, my sister? <laughs> says, no, mom, I make unsubscribe. Give me <laughs> Sorry, you should all watch, um, you should all just look up Sister Minnie and uh, subscribe because they're, 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 they're the, the funniest shit. The, the job you're going to do, are you working in a mine shaft? You making making a, making a funny there? That was that was the the play on words. Getting shafted is in working in mine shafts. In which case, be very careful. That is a very deadly job to do. Mm. Be very careful. <laughs> Yay! I'm back in town now. We got to figure out what I'm doing back in town. Also, have a look at the upgrades. Can't upgrade much yet. Um, but I am going to do the shield upgrade. Ah, uh, why not? I'll do all the upgrades that I can. I'll get them all eventually. I've got a charm... Spirits? I can't interact with this screen. Getting sent to Cape Preston on flat pay on a very low rate. What are you... What, what, what's the job? 
Cape Preston, that's, that's, fuck, that, that's like, down the bottom, right? Is that down the bottom or is that up the top? I can't remember. Damn it. Spirit male delivery. What about spirit female delivery? Oh, I'm funny. I'm not really funny. That wasn't a funny joke. That was, that was a terrible joke. I shouldn't have made it. Am I supposed to? Where is where is this spirit male? Mechanical TA. Trade assistant. Oh. Fuckers. I don't know. In Australia, with the living exp expenses in Australia, um... Ah, uh, here we go, that's what I'm looking for. Deliver me from evil! Haha! No more, no more corruption, I almost said rot again. Us is us. Walmart's dream. Out of the back there. The only problem with Keener is I can't um I can't um play videos and play game at the same time. Which is annoying. Who are you gonna call? Kina, apparently. Can I open the chests? Oh. Or do I have to fight each chest? That'd be cool. What's this one? Oh, defeat the enemies! Defeat them! Get ha! the next one. Get him! Yes. Ow! Ow! Wait, what? Yay, I got them all! Aha! Whoop, whoop. Does that mean the next one opens up? So I defeated this chest, can I do the next chest now? Yeah. Ah, that's fair enough. Oh, yay! Alright. Do this one. I will crush you. Oh, I missed it. Hate these things. Ah! Oh, got him. There's two left. 
There's another last one. Oh, there he is. I win! <laughs> oh my gosh, that means that the third one's gonna be like too hard for me to do, isn't it? Beat all the enemies, there are. Oh no. Any flyers? Got it! Three and one! Oh, four and one, nice. How did that happen? Ah, fuck you! Got him. I ah, just missed. Oh, just, just failed. Oh my gosh, that was so close. Oh, dang it. That's annoying. Oh, damn it, my health's not back. Yeah! Now we're getting somewhere. Woohoo! Woohoo! Woo. Yeah, yeah! And my rut is here for me. I hate that they called that, honestly, though. Woo! What is that? What? Oh, it's a unicorn hat. Okay, it looks like a, like a unicorn hat with the mustache and also it was Zelda. I win, I win. Replay, no. Replay, no. Replay, no. Why is that one closed? No. I want to see what happens in a replay, but.
Já nemám. Oh, I just kept more stuff. Oh, and it closed. Damn it. That's annoying. The rest of them are open. Alright, we got it. We got it. <laughs> Wait, what the hell? <laughs> okay. It just reset us. Okay, at least I had that uh, that like on them. Hey guys. <laughs> Oh, hey. Who is that? See what? Little, little footprints? Little footprints coming up into there. Oh. Well, I can't go into there. I'll wait for you at the water shrine in the Forgotten Forest. Wait, the water shrine? Oh my gosh, there's a thing, there's a thing that tells me how much I, I can collect in each area. <gasps> I've missed stuff. I've missed stuff. Oh no. Oh no. Water shrine. Collect the collectathon. Oh no, I wish I'd noticed that before. I can't reach it from here. Huh. Dang it! Let me in! Ooh, hello, glowing thing. Glowing thing is nice. Done randomly. I am well. I am well. Ooh, I am getting starting to get that urge to play Factorio though. Probably isn't something that um, Corey wants to hear, but you're worried for politics. Well, yeah, politics is so fuck fucked right now. Like completely fucked, bro. Oh, it's not calling you bro, but like you know what I mean. It's like. It is totally fucked. Molesh. What am I supposed to be doing now? Tucker Carlson being the next president? Sorry, all I can think of is him giggling like a little girl while Elon Musk says the most fucking dumb, dumbass shit ever. Oh, oh I'm just... I, I fired so many to the staff. <laughs> fucking... What a simp, hey. Well, no, I see um, Tucker Carlson would end up just being like a Christian cinema type. Just a complete simp for people with money. Dada mask! Ooh, sold out. Didn't know that you could sell them out. Unicorn! Wait, you can sell out this stuff? What? Can stuff be sold out? Now it makes me want to buy heaps of them. But I don't know if it will. Oh. Alright. Let's let's collect some stuff before I jump into Factorio. What do you reckon? Oh wait a second. Oh my gosh! I just noticed this. My follower goal got completed. What the hell? When did that happen? It happened the other day when I got the, the raid. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Whoops. I'm so dumb. Alright, start a new goal. Let's get to 190. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh my gosh, imagine if I ended up with 200 followers. That'd be sick. He was fired from Fox. Oh yeah, that's right. I heard about that this morning. <clears throat> no. 
do it. No, I, honestly, honestly, I don't think Tucker Carlson has any chance. I, I honestly don't think so. Um, yeah, he, 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 yeah. I think that he has a chance to split the vote and make things weird. You know. But when you've got DeSantis and Trump possibly running. If Trump backed down and endorsed Tucker Carlson, then you're in trouble. Oh gosh, it seems like forever since Biden's been in office, but like, yeah. It's scarier that, um, here's, here's the thing that's scarier to me. Um, Trump getting into office means he will immediately do a, um, executive order to ban all trans healthcare in the entire, at, at a federal level. So that's like, and we know that he will do this from like his, he, he, he's, he, he will do that. That's the first thing he will do. Actually, yeah, now that you come to mention it, um, DeSantis backing down to endorse Tucker um, would be a bit of a challenge to Trump. But at the end of the day, the bombs will still drop for the rest of the world. Um, so focusing on local and st focusing on local and state levels is important as well. I do. I, I think that Trump and DeSantis and and Tr Trump, DeSantis, or um, Tucker Carlson will probably have an equal chance of um, of uh, winning against. Um... Here's the thing, though. Like Trump is still on the forefront of everyone's minds, so it's it would it would surprise me if jo if Joe Biden didn't win the next election. Um, more people than people realize hate Republicans. And and because they're really ramping up that um, anti-trans narrative, you're probably going to end up pushing people to the polls um, against Republicans at the end of the day. Because most people, most Republicans, don't give a shit about trans um, issues. Like, the statistics show that. The polling data shows that, like, Republican, like, it's, I think it's 30% of Republicans care about the trans, um, the trans, um, healthcare, um, anti-trans narrative, like, only 30% of Republicans, um, and that's registered Republicans, like, Republican voters, so it's not an issue that Republicans care a lot about, um, and them talking so much about it is, like, and not talking about issues that they care about is going to push people away from the polls for Republicans. With tr with Trump, when he came in to power, he was doing populism. Now he's 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 not like trans. The trans panic stuff is not a popular issue to the to the average person. It's just not. Most people don't care about trans issues, so it wouldn't motivate anyone to go to vote either for or against it. I think that would motivate more people to vote against to to vote against anti-trans um, bills. Like I do think that that most people want to be decent human beings and let people live their lives. At the end of the day, though, it sucks that um, we have to be the bargaining chips on the table here because at the end of the day, the bombs will still increase. The bombings will increase. The the stupid Cold War bullshit with China will still continue. Um, and it's our lives that they're throwing around to try and play games with while there is a bipartisan effort to uh, impose neoliberalism to the rest of the world. Republicans are just there to scare us into voting Democratic, or in Australia's case, the, the Liberal Party is just there to scare us into voting for Labour, who will then continue to enact neoliberal policies, uh, both um, domestic and abroad. It's the same as the reason why um, neoliberalism depends on poor and homeless people to exist in order to scare the middle class into working hard. 
you just really wish Biden wasn't running, still voting against him in the primary if it lasts long enough. Yeah. So yeah, just if you if you can, when you can, what you can. Like if you can if if you have the energy and like um understanding to like get involved in local politics in in your uh, you know, the primary voting and all of that, do it. I I say do it. Um but you're not a bad person if it's not something that you understand how to do. It's not something that you're able to do. Just, you know, hug your brothers and sisters as well. Like, don't forget to, like, involve your community because if the federal government turns against you, if your state government turns against you, all you have is your neighbours. So it's important to get out there and, you know, be a neighbour. You've said, you've said something with the pay lol. I don't understand. Comma dot slash dot dot. Sorry. <laughs> Comma period. Uh, I don't know what, I don't, you know what, I don't know what that key is called. The one with the, that's just a long line. That's interesting. But yeah. It's important to remember as well, like, obviously, like, the, the trans stuff has been happening for years, we've been screaming about it for years, anyone who thinks that things are moving too fast just hasn't been listening to us, I have been here for years, talking about this, screaming about it, I've spoken to my family members about it, and I've still had family members and friends turn to me and say, hey, this stuff seems to be going really fast, I'm like, I told you six months ago. Oh, I flipped the bird. Yeah. <clears throat> know your worth, man. No, know your worth. It's okay to be worried. Just try not to, like, let it... You know. You still need to live your life <laughs> as well. That's something I struggle with sometimes. I was remembering that I still need to live my life the best way I know how. And I'm not an effective, um, you know, revolutionary or friend or activist if I'm not able to live my life. You're in a Republican district? Hmm. Hey, what was that movie you were talking about earlier, Monkey Game from the Moon? Something about blowing up pipelines and how, you know... Um, that peaceful activism is no longer, like, an option. I mean, I disavow all of that, but it just seems like an interesting movie to watch. Book to read. No, I disavow. I definitely don't do those things. But it is an interesting idea. It's an interesting idea, the thought that activism, peaceful activism, doesn't really enact much change. Oh, do you know what I found, what was really interesting lately? You know, I'm, hold on, give me a second. Like, I've got too much to talk about now. I'm on a, oh no, wait, not the warp button. I need, I, I thought that was a save point. Yes. Let's get ourselves, like... Um, so, like, I noticed, uh, like, because cause I, I, um, frequent the, the, the message board, uh, the Reddit, um, subreddit, uh, uh, against, Ver no more Vosh spam, or whatever that is, I can't remember what it's called, but, um, I, I just find it really interesting that people have the same level of vitriol towards Vosh as they do to ContraPoints, can, like, can someone explain that to me? Can someone explain it to me? It just... It just seems like... ContraPoints, who has never claimed to be a far-left revolutionary type, as far as I know, I've watched all of her videos, like, and, like, as Dan, but, like... People expect her to be a... to, to, like... 
not be a lib when she's always been a lib. She's always spoken like a lib, and she believes in, you know, peaceful, peaceful um, progress. Like, she believes in reform. She is a reformist. She's not a revolutionary. I just find that really interesting that people expected, uh, are, still expect that of her. And then, yeah, she's basically that likes a bit of wealth privilege. She's far from what people want. She's just, she's popular. Yeah. Yeah, she makes good videos. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know I I don't know it just but like to put the to put her in the same box as someone like Vorsch who actually like you know has called himself like a libertarian socialist or like an anarchist in the past you know not ever subscribing to any of those things and who is an absolute like Western imperialist in ways that contrapoints doesn't even get go close to. Like, yes, she benefits from the upholding of neoliberalism, but, like, she's not walking around acting as if she's... she doesn't think that. I don't know. Enjoy the... enjoy the... the media that you consume. And stop putting libs into the same pocket as people who, like, uh, abuse animals. <laughs> Oh yeah, her politics. Like even in her, in her latest video, her latest video was great. Was great. Um, but her, but the, the I, her even then she she spoke in that in that video about how she believes that she doesn't believe that uh, violent um, protest is um, ever works when in fact the violent protest is generally the only thing that has worked. Here's an interesting idea for you that I want you to think about. Um, what was his name? I need to find his name. Hold on. Um, I was watching, um, a Adam Conover, um, podcast. What was his name? Not Mathieu, no, not Jacques Pierre. We Saint just I'll let, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to um, bring it up on the thing. I mean, like, have just block her. No, like, no, she's too important to politics. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the lib shit. But like, that's the thing. Like, when you you need to you need to understand bias so that you can actually filter out the stuff that's like useless to you, like her lib shit. Like, just ignore the lib shit and get interested in the philosoph philosophical uh, stuff. Like, how, where she said that, that there is a legit limit d debate to be had about women in sports, I disagree with completely. When there is a problem with too many trans people winning Olympic sports, then talk to me. Uh, until then, there's no real debate to be had. Um, it could be. It could be. Um, need to watch this as well. I need to do this one as well. Oh, damn. What is this? No. No, opening that one. Why is that too bad transphobe? What is this? Okay. I'm getting distracted, but, like, I, I, I... What is this? You will always be your assigned gender at birth! Oh, wow. one topic. No. But archaeologists wow, will no. identify <laughs> you both. You bones! I don't... Anyone who says that archaeologists will identify you by your bones does not understand how archaeology works. Until this decade, in fact, I think it's the last five years. Until, like, no, yeah, I think it's until this decade, the 2020s. Um, archaeologists were identifying um, human remains by the items they were surrounded with. So if you were a female warrior from 2000 BCE, then and then you were designated as a man if you were buried with, like, weaponry. Like, that's how they identified that stuff. Turns out archaeology is about more than just biology. <laughs> Hi, shy Nikoniko! Uh, the only one was friends trans woman that spied on Russia. Not her. She sounds based and awesome.
care. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I'm too bad. Sorry, you are just too depressed for us to give you HRT. That's literally why I'm here. Uh, see you in 10 months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee whiz. Gee willick. Do you know how I did it? Like, whenever I'm, whenever I'm talking, because I, I'm perfectly honest with my psychiatrist or psychologist, but like the way I talk about it is very much like matter of factly. Like I have no chance of actually um, unaliving myself because I'm too scared to die. That is it. Like I have no ability to actually do the what go to to take that final step. Some people might. Um, and, and that's what I focus on when I'm talking to my psychiatrist. Um, unfortunately it does feel like I, I, I tend to, a lot of those things tend to get swept under the rug because of that, but most of my depression, um, can be pretty much rooted towards poverty and, um, existing under capitalism. So solve that psychiatrist, <laughs> mindfulness that out of existence, my psychologist. <laughs> Uh, French Revolution, yes, it it was to do with the French Revolution, um, and uh, I'm going to find that very shortly, and then I'm going to watch that. Let's me get those things in order so I don't forget. Um, it's the Adam Conover podcast, it was recent. Adam Conover has been, like, just pumping them out recently. If you haven't um, listened to some of these, some of these are just amazing. Like, he even, like, uh, like this one was interesting, but uh, it was definitely, like, you know, very lib, lib mentality reform rather than revolution. Um, this, yeah, definitely watch the China one, because, I mean, the China one can be, uh, the, the truth about TikTok in China can basically boil down to every company collects your data and sells it to governments. Every single company sells your data. TikTok is no difference. The only difference is China might, might not pay for it. That's it. That's it. That's the only difference. Um, yeah, he's awesome. Uh, IQ tests of bunk. Well, we already knew that. Where are we looking at? Is this choke point capitalism? No. Oh my gosh. I didn't think it was this far back. I mean, yes, Elon is just dumb. How long is that? It's 19 minutes. Stop snitching. Where is it? I... I... This is so weird. Oh, it's because it's not his videos playlist. I'm missing some. Uh, hacking, biology, how unions win. This one. Yes, y'all need to watch the Organizing for Power with Jane McLeby. Hold on. Um... Put that, put that in your uh, playlist. Uh, hacking biology, capitalism, uh, master screwed, viral justice, criminal justice reform. This guy is it. This guy, uh, Yuval Noah Harari. He's an absolute idiot. Um, it was really interesting. Oh, I don't know which one it was then. Fuck. Could be it could be this one actually. Damn. So he had so so he had something so French guy. Involved with French revolution and American revolution. I didn't spell that right. Ah, Marquis de Lafayette. Yeah, de Lafayette. Lafayette, I think. Lafayette. Um, yeah, Marquis de Lafayette. So, okay. Now, this might be an, an unpopular decision, but I am very... This 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 did just spark a thought in my head. So basically, my, there was a a book about him. So book what was written about him?
So Lafayette, uh, La Lafayette, Lafayette. I, I believe that this was the guy who had a lot of money and used his money to fund the revolution um, during the uh, French Revolution and uh, inspired by the American by the American Revolution. Like that, that that's basically the idea. The idea there was a book about this. True TV, what is this? I have no idea what that is, but... Because there was an interview about a guy who wrote a book about it, and I could have sworn it was Adam Conover um, interviewing the guy. Book. Revolution, Hero of Two Worlds. It might have been choke point capitalism. I'm going on such a tangent right now. No, it's not that's not the book. It's a good book though. Okay. Lucky Hero of Two Worlds, Mike Duncan. It was. It was. I was right. Okay. Yes, it was Mark Duncan wrote this book. Yes, I'm not. I'm not crazy. So the French Revolution was a bourgeois revolution. Yes, yes. But okay. Here's an interesting thing. Here's the something I just thought. Interestingly, Mr. Beast. So he wants to run for to be president some day, right? Because he. And, and, okay, let's assume that he truly does want to inspire children and make change in the world. Let's assume that he actually has those beliefs and that's why he's doing the things that he does. For a second. He's obviously not going about it in a way that's going to, like, result in any real change. But isn't it an interesting idea that someone who is horrifically naive wants to do these things and has a quite a large platform and a lot of money to you know campaign for that sort of thing obviously he can't run for president at the moment and even if he becomes president it's not going to change shit what happens when he realizes that he can't change shit because every capitalist gets to a point where he realizes that capitalism isn't going to actually solve the world's problems. Like, you don't become a billionaire without leaving the corpses of, you know, millions of people behind you. You don't get to that point. Unless you inherit your wealth, maybe. But you don't get to the point where you have a self-sustaining fortune without coming to terms with the fact that you cannot change the system. Um, so, I don't know, I just find it interesting because I listened to this podcast talking about uh, Marquis, de, uh, Marquis de Fayette, Le Fayette um, talking about how a person with a lot of money decided to fund the revolution. So, like, it'd be interesting to see, like, I, I, I know people hate Mr. Beast a lot. Uh, I don't hate him. I just see him as, as a symptom of, like, a larger problem. But it would be very, very satisfying if he realized that systemic change is necessary to change the things that he wants to change. 
Like, what is he going to do when he comes to the point where he realizes that he can either not be a millionaire or billionaire or succumb to the system and become a part of the system? Because I don't think he's there just yet. I, don't, I think he's just a naive... I think he's just a naive fool at this point. I don't really believe that, like, he actually understands capitalism or understands how real things work like his his shock at um, the treatment of trans people like recently kind of like indicates just how naive of a person he is you know to be talking about running for president someday like without having any kind of understanding of um, how you know oppressive systems work i just think maybe don't throw the baby out with the bathwater keep an eye on him you know because having someone fund your revolution can result in guillotines. I disavow violent revolution. De I definitely disavow, but I'm just, it's something to think about. I just thought, hope, you, hope you listen to others because you totally believe you're shocked how much hate their friend just got get, being trans. Yeah, most people get shocked because most people don't see it uh, or listen to it. And and that these are people that care. People who care about you don't <laughs> won't realize just how bad it is for you until they experience it themselves. <laughs> like fire, yeah, fire, fire. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, controlled controlled burns. You know, I mean, like um, you know, uh, word burns. You know, telling people. Oh, what a sick burn that was! Yeah, that's 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 the kind of burns I advocate for. Not not real fire, not on people. Oh, but yeah, I I don't know for revolutionary history with Mark Duncan. Where did that? Why is that not on here? So I went through it. I wait. Is there is there a different thing? How did I hear this? How did I hear this? It must have been taken down, because I did listen to it. Yeah, maybe. Oh, this was a while ago. I would have to just completely, like, scroll through. Because it wasn't on Apple, because I don't do Apple. No. Oh, no! It wasn't Adam. It wasn't Adam Conover. Oh, my gosh. We are I'm back. such an idiot. Sam Cedar, Emma Vigland on the Majority Report. Want to welcome to the program Mike Duncan. He's the host of the Revolutions podcast, author of The Hero of... But isn't it funny that it's unfactually as well? <laughs> That's hilarious. But yeah. This is a video. What's this? You just missed the weirdest live stream of all time. The Twitter account Eli Art tweeted this screenshot of a Twitch stream with the caption, someone installed OBS onto a Walmart laptop and has been streaming the Walmart without being caught for the past 10 hours. The stream was just a still webcam pointed at the opposite side of the computer aisle, but it wound up with pretty decent audience. A Walmart employee actually set it up under the username Walmart triple zero twelve and titled oh, I hope he doesn't get fired. great value broadcasting system hashtag oh one. It amassed around 4,000 viewers just watching an empty Walmart aisle, spamming chat and song lyrics and chanting cart when they heard a shopping cart off screen. There was even a discord <laughs> made by fans dedicated to discuss the activities of the Walmart and a Spotify playlist so made of every song that played. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love human beings. I fucking love them because of this, because of this, even in like this, this capitalist like hellhole that we live in, we can still create just art, just art the, the level of creativity that people have is amazing people will say oh what are you gonna what would you do if you didn't have like a monetary reason to do it this it's not meaningful for anything other than entertainment 
But <coughs> to do this, we would need to invent the capabilities to do it. So we would end up doing those things anyway. Damn. Start, they're going to fire him and start their own Walmart Twitch channel with their permission, jeez. Are, are companies even allowed to do that? ...over the loudspeaker. But it was removed for violating the Twitch terms of service, so if it doesn't come back... If it doesn't come back, what? Don't leave me in suspense. Oh my gosh, Dog of Wisdom 2? <gasps> I'm stuck in the algorithm now. Domino's is Twitch. Gosh. I, do you know what I would love to do? I would actually love to set up cameras on my truck when I'm doing my runs and just like, you know, stream myself driving my truck. I would not drive into any dogs. But like, I would need, um, I would need someone like full-time mods to run that because I would not, I would not be act interacting with chat or anything like that other than, um, voice to speech, um, wait, text to speech. Um, I would need that, and I wouldn't be able to moderate so. Maybe one day if I ever own my own truck, if I'd like to truck in across Australia, that'd be sick. I'd love that. Also, this is Joe, a channel which has been around for a very long time, doing a lot of really awesome stuff. That Joe was where I discovered Vaporwave. Yeah, yeah, it would be. I, I, like, ideally I'd want to actually pay someone to do that. I would need to be earning enough through Twitch to, that, for that to be viable. <gasps> Stop making me pause the stream! <laughs> that is one of my favourite movies of all time. It is called uh, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, and it's just, it's just amazing. Just turn off your brain and don't think about the fact that they didn't get any, like, trans or gay people to actually play those roles. Also, one of the characters is trans. I love this. This is all recorded using one of those, like... It's like a connect for the computer. Happy Happy it has to have, have a fondest to wonder guess. <gasps> the greater good! Ha! 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 Monica. Monica, ha! Ha! Monica. Inshallah, brother. Inshallah, brother. Happiness does indeed happen. I like the elephant's word of wisdom of some days is just fucked. <laughs> Still fine with the X-Files guy, guy playing a trans woman on uh, Twin Peaks. Uh. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, for me, like, I, I, I'm of the belief that there is always going to be someone good enough at acting to fill a role. Like... Um, the people who you see on television and in acting roles aren't there because they're good at, aren't just there because they're good at their, why is this coming up in my feed again? Every, it, like, t this is a 12 year old video and it happens all the time. This is just 20 minutes of a video explaining how to turn a ball inside out without Pinching the corners. Seriously, I'm not going to play it now because, like, you don't need that in your life. But this is amazing. Um, anyway, what was I saying? <laughs> Watch that video. 
why does the algorithm break like that? And like, I swear, every five years this comes up in my algorithm. I forget about it. I watch it. I forget about it. It's just amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Stop looking at the, the suggesteds. Um... Counter Reeves can play a track as well. He seems like a good enough ally to listen. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I think that um, people should get trans trans people to play trans people, definitely. I'm not going to hate people for uh, taking away transgender roles. Like, you know, like, that's not... I, I don't care about it to that degree, but at the end of the day, the people who are in roles on television and in movies are there because of nepotism. Like, that and that's it. Like, they're not there because they are better than anyone else at acting. They are there because their parents were there before them and or their friends or their family. They are there because of nepotism. That's 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 what it is. Um Yeah. But it's not it's not a big deal to me. They they're, they're just there to um as I guess uh, the sacrificial pieces to make us believe that um, anyone couldn't make it someday, you know, like if you try really hard. Cle Chris Pratt clearly was the best Mario voice they could get. I don't know, like the Super- I unironically like Super Mario Brothers. Like the original, like live action film that they that they made with with the strippers like i i fucking love that movie i think it's amazing the goombas were perfect i love how nobody who made that movie knew what mario was about like what mario brothers had anything to they they didn't understand what that game was they just made a story and it was amazing and it was a beautiful mess and the 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 um Visual effects that they use, the practical, um, the practical effects that they use, they're just amazing. It's amazing. It's it's not close to the Mario game, but like it's beautiful. They even had Yoshi in it. Oh, take the sun is out. Oh, we needed that after that rain. <laughs> what the? F what the? F Why is there a rainbow flying in the sky? Are you kidding me right now? Even hey, God is more coming to nuts, you know. I'll get the gun. We can shoot at the flag. Wait, do you think that maybe we're overdoing it? We're getting mad at colors. Maybe we should be worrying about bigger, more important issues. No! Fucking snowflake! Funny, if they saw a, um, the funny thing about that is if there was snowflakes and the right kind of frost, they wouldn't just see a rainbow, they would see a sun dog. Which you can look up. Sun dog. It's a thing. It's really interesting. Um, I need to take a quick break, but when I'm back, let's um, boot up Factorio and have a look at the game and see if it's much different at the start from, you know, I'm excited to, to check it out. Someone is. But I'll be right back, so don't go anywhere or do either way, though. I'll be right back after these short announcements. And I'm back. Hmm. All right. So, why is Abigail th uh, Abigail um Thor's Thor's Thorn? Wait. My gosh, you've you've made me not you've made me forget her name again. Abigail Thorn, right? Yeah, Abigail Thorn. Yeah. I don't know, she, she, she's just always up in the recommend. she's in the recommendations on, like, everyone's, because, um, well, because, uh, oh, that looks cool. Oh my, oh my gosh, that looks so cool. Holy moly, that looks cool. <laughs> Sorry, that's just really cool. That. You can build spaceships in this game now. That's so cool. Um, but yeah, Abigail is uh, is in everyone's recommendations because of uh, CIA funding, of course. <laughs> All right. I think this is right. The free play is the main one. 
The intended way. Oh my gosh. It affects novus, not now novus. Oh, it's the first first one. Has much higher biters than intended by space exploration. Space exploration default. Okay. I have no idea what this is all. Four. Cliffs, moisture, terrain type. The enemy. Enemy bases. Peaceful mode. No. Ah. Difficulty. Ah. Pollution affects all planets. Alright. I think this is right. I don't think I I don't think I need to really change anything, but uh Do not show the preview if I want to explore the map. Alright, we're gonna start from scratch, y'all. I'm gonna put uh, I guess Factorio as the topic, because that's what I'm playing. But feel free to send me stuff uh, to distract me in any way that you'd like. In fact, I might put that. Re invitation. Invitation? Oh my gosh. To distract me. Yes. Properties. Oh, no. Ah, uh, this one's got a cute smiley side face. All right, this is Factorio. Factorio free play. Your task is to yes, I know all of this. Enable creative mode. No. Ah. Coronal mass ejection has arrived at Nalvis. Coronal mass ejection stream detected. I don't know what that that means. Oh, all of these, all of these mods. Was Shakespeare gay? Did he even exist? You believe in Shakespeare? <laughs> did 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 man go to the moon? <laughs> you believe in the moon? What's this? There is a lot of different stuff here. Oh. All right, so Informatron. So this is a mod that basically says this. I don't know what that meant, but beacons. Hold on, I just want to find out what uh, coronal mass. All right, here we go. Coronal mass ejections. Stars in the area frequently eject dangerous streams <laughs> of particles. It's not uncommon for a planet or moon to stray into one of these particle streams. Oh, so so they're going for realism in this. There is no. Uh, there is no. Uh, <gasps> Oh my gosh. Uh, no. Thank you. What's this? Pencil. What is that? The tag there. What's over there? Let's find out what's over there. Oh, was Shakespeare gay? Hey! It's this person. I can't remember their name. To the right honourable Henry Risley, Earl of Southampton and Baron of Titchfield. The love I dedicate to your lordship is without end. Whereof this pamphlet without beginning There is so much new stuff in this. Moiety. The warrant I have of your Hello, shy not sleepy, sleepy. Of lines, makes it assured of acceptance. What I have done is yours. What I have to do is yours. Being part in all I have devoted yours. Were my worth greater, my duty would show devoted. Me. Meantime, as it is, it is bound to your lordship. Whom I wish my life <gasps> oh. still with all Got one on how femininity influenced by Bloodborne. Interesting. Hold on, I'm gonna pause this one for now because I'm I'm just gonna like this is this is this is me learning for the first time. This one here. Core seams? 
So this is what, for a core mining drill to gain core fragments. I can't do anything with it. So there is a lot of things that have been added into this game. Just wanted to say. Why am I pink? I should be able to change the color of me, shouldn't I? Yes, I am able to change me. Here we go. Um, actually, you know what? Go for more of an orange. Wow, it's really hard to get orange in this. Yeah, there we go. Orange is good. Oh my goodness. So there's apparently there's a um there's a, there's a, there's an achievement you can get in this game for, um, only, like, like, not crafting anything, I think. Which is a relatively hard one to do. Which I'm wondering whether I should go for that. Or just play it as normal. I'm gonna play it as normal. Alright. There it is. Sir, sir! Wasn't he a Nancy, sir? Look at that earring, sir. All them theatrical types were at it, sir. Boys dressing up as girls and all that. For centuries, school children and scholars alike have looked at Shakespeare. Is she Doctor Who? There's plays about girls dressing up as boys, dressing up as girls, and thought, isn't this all a bit gay? Well, today we're going yes, to go and it's awesome. the complete works and lay out all the evidence. Was William Shakespeare, commonly considered the greatest writer in the English language, a big gay icon? But first... Hmm. These days, we tend to frame discussions of sexuality around questions of identity. It's right there in the acronym, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. All words referring to what someone is on the inside, how they identify. But this framing is very new. In fact, all these words are very new. The word gay has existed since the 14th century, but it didn't mean homosexual until the 20s or the 30s. Bisexual was originally coined in 1824 to mean having both kinds of sexual organs, and the meaning only flipped to be about sexual attraction in 1914. Transgender really? is very new indeed, coming from the 1970s. Out of all of them, lesbian is the oldest. It originally just meant coming from the Greek island of Lesbos, meaning you can have lesbian wine, but Lesbos is also known for the Greek poet. Jeez, Sino, I didn't know that. Love poems to both men and women. People have been saying... Yeah, and, the, and the, the, there's a, apparently a lot of... Uh, a con there was a lot of controversy around that in the, on the li island of Lesbos, because like initially some people were just like, oh no, let's not do that. Let's not allow all of that. Um, and then, yeah... Lesbos hates lesbians trying to get married there. Um, it's a, it, it's it's literally become a, um, it's literally become a, uh, um, tourism thing. So, uh, it, it it's part of their it's part of their economy. So I I think that the people that live there and interact with people are fine, it's just when, you know, you have issues such as, you know, right, yeah, there is a tourist attraction there, sometimes the tourists aren't the best, uh, people, wait, do I need to, oh, I need to, 
I, I need to literally put it in a thing. All right, all right, all right. Um. Okay. Sorry, I'm just I'm just thinking about um how how I'm uh, how I'm gonna align this. I think I'm gonna align it this way, which means I'm gonna change that around. Put six coal there, and remember how to pick up items, which I don't do don't remember. Oh, right clicking it. I gotta right click it. Alright, cool. Sorry. <laughs> Remembering how to play this game is fun. From the island of Lesbos since the 1730s. But the main meaning really was just from Lesbos until the 20th century when the meaning female homosexual overtook it. And indeed, heterosexual only goes back to 1894 and wasn't in widespread use until the 1960s. So you will never find a text from Shakespeare's time saying I am gay, or I am trans, in so many words. In fact, you'll be hard pushed to even find something that says, I only like men, or I like women. People in Shakespeare's time just didn't think of who they were attracted to as part of their identity. Instead, you see a focus I have on a friend. the things that someone does, the acts they take. So and so did this specific act, such as in this letter from 1601, accusing the Earl of Southampton of getting a little too close with a captain of his called Piers Edmonds. He ate Ooh. and drank at his table and lay in his tent. <gasps> oh. The Earl of Southampton would call and hug him in his arms and play wantonly with him. None of this is about who the Earl is. <laughs> Or even who he's attracted to. This isn't a mask. You know, people still, gay folks still in the word gay. They wanted to keep the meaning happy, which they didn't want gay people to be. Oh, that's depressing, but also very, very, you know, true. Ah, uh, that's that sucks. A burner lab. What does a burner lab do? An automated research strategy structure. Oh my gosh, there's so much new stuff. This is something he did. Even in law, homosexuality itself, simply being attracted hey, to another man, isn't the crime. It's buggery. Unorthodox sex, like anal sex or bestiality, that's the crime. People in the 16th century didn't identify as homosexual ah. or heterosexual any more than today someone identifies as a burglar. All of which is to say that the modern way of thinking of sexuality as identity is something that's pretty new, and if you're not careful when applying it to people in the past, you can be ahistoric. The boxes that we have today to sort people into are not the same boxes that they had in 16th century England. We can't time travel back to Shakespeare's day and ask him, are you gay? And even if we could, he would not know what that meant. So this stuff is less about, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, on the charge of being a massive gay, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Where we have to decide one way or another at the end. I am not here to draw a conclusion. I am here to lay out the evidence before you. And more things that made me go, Hmm. So Shakespeare is born in a little market town called Stratford-upon-Avon, and his dad is a local bigwig, and he has a string of civic positions like High Bailiff and Alderman, and that means he gets to rule on little local court cases like you know, who's not cleaned out their guttering, who's let the pigs out into the street. Um, he's very ambitious, he actually applies for a coat of arms at one point, and as High Bailiff, his family gets to sit in the front row at church. What a perk! So being a big wig in Stratford is still a pretty small wig, basically anywhere else, uh, but he does have a little bit of power and influence, and as the eldest surviving son, William Shakespeare is the one who's going to inherit his house and his estate. But instead of a considered, planned, arranged marriage between two big families in the area, instead our Will has a pretty hasty marriage to a lady called Anne Hathaway. We know it's hasty because he's relatively young, from the church records in Stratford, we can see that most men married for the first time at an older age than our Will did. He's just 18 when he gets married to Anne Hathaway. In fact, he's so young that he still needs his dad's permission to marry. Not only that, but they also get a special arrangement to be married as soon as possible. Normally, before you get married, your priest has to read out to the whole congregation your intention to get married three times so that anyone who's got an objection can come forward, but they get special permission to just have it read out once. And Anne Hathaway gives birth to their eldest child, Susanna, six months after the wedding. So historians have generally mm. interpreted this to mean that 
Shakespeare got Anne Hathaway pregnant out of wedlock. If you trace back the birth of their child nine months, you get to August 1582, which we know was a particularly good harvest year. And when the harvest came in, there would have been parties and dancing and music and drinking and high spirits. Maybe Shakespeare and Anne Hathaway just had a bit too much of a good time. The pair go on to have two more children in 1585, a set of twins called Judith and Hamnet. Hamnet with a n. Apparently they were named after their godparents, which means there was not one but two people walking around in Stratford called Hamnet. And then of course we have the <laughs> Every Hamnet. Of his plays have been analysed through the lens of queer theory, most notably his comedies like As You Like It and Twelfth Night, both of which feature a girl dressing up as a boy and then another boy finds her weirdly attractive. Oh, how apt the poor are to be proud! You might know that women weren't allowed on stage in Shakespeare's day, so all Wait, why is um a, why why would a woman dressing up as a man be stra strangely attractive? That's just attractive. I mean, people are generally attractive. All of his female roles were not only Hamnet, by men, baby. His father's more famous play of a similar name. Desdemona's a man. Yes, original original character Hamnet. Juliet's a man. <laughs> Lady Macbeth is a literal drag queen. In recent years, productions that make the plays even more gay have been pretty popular, uh, most notably the National Theatre's production of Twelfth Night, where Malvolio becomes a closeted lesbian, and uh, their production of Midsummer Night's Dream, where it's Oberon who falls in love with the donkey-eared bottom and not Titania. But no matter how gay the Wait. characters are on stage, I don't- Beyonce was then? Was there back then? I don't think we can what? take this to mean anything about Shakespeare the man. Like, he also wrote a lot of Italian characters, but I don't think you could argue that therefore he was Italian. I don't think you can even argue that he knew a lot of Italians. He set several plays in Venice without seemingly having any idea that Venice has canals and that's like its whole thing. Strike it from the record! Next, the poems. So unlike the plays, the poems aren't written from the point of view of a particular character, although they're not exactly Shakespeare's diary entries transcribed into sonnet form either. Of course, poetry is fiction too. But unlike the plays, Shakespeare seems to write his sonnets for a private audience. Maybe just him and a couple of his mates. He mostly writes the sonnets in the 1590s, but they don't get published until 1609, and even then it's not clear that he actually wanted them to be published. They might have been published without his consent. And you can see why when you read them. Some of them are really personal. They're like, they're embarrassing. They talk about you know, sexual revulsion and humiliation and betrayal and self-loathing. So sonnets are meant to be love poems. And Nobody noticed that I just reset the map. I'm going to try for the no built, no like crafting on my own character thing. And yet some of them are definitely written to a man. Because I am a, like I am a glutton for, oh, thou for my punishment. Lovely boy, who in thy power dost hold time's fickle glass. Just the mm. act of addressing any sonnet, even one that's not explicitly about romantic love, to a man is embarrassing enough that one publisher in 1640 felt the need to change the pronouns to make it seem like Shakespeare was talking about a lady. So Shakespeare didn't decide on the order of the sonnets that we generally agree on today, he didn't give them numbers. But scholars tend to agree that they are addressed to three separate characters. The fair youth, the dark lady, and Cupid, the god of love. Of those, the vast majority, 126 out of 154, are addressed to the fair youth. And these are the nice ones that get read out at weddings. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? And let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love, which alters when it alteration finds. So maybe the fair youth is one person in particular, or maybe it's several people. But if we go by the sonnets, Shakespeare is definitely in love with at least one man. But out, alack, he was but one hour mine. The regent cloud hath masked him from me now. Yet him for this my love no whit disdaineth. Sons of the world may stain when heaven's sun staineth. Unless you think I'm some snowflake millennial injecting identity politics in where it doesn't belong, Shakespeare scholars have been talking about this as far back as 1780. Edmund Malone says of the fair youth, to this person, whoever he was, 120 of the following poems are addressed and the remaining 28 are addressed to a lady. And in 1817, Shakespeare scholar Nathan Drake, Nathan Drake, huh, says nothing but extreme carelessness could have induced other Shakespeare scholars Gideon and Sewell to conceive that the prior part of these sonnets was directed to a female. The fair youth sonnets are about love and the fleeting nature of beauty. Shakespeare talks about how the fair youth stole his girlfriend and how there's this other better rival poet who's usurping him in the affections of the fair youth. When we get to Sonnet 127, we're introduced to another character who scholars have called the Dark Lady. Therefore, my mistress brows are raven black. So the Dark Lady is also beautiful and the poet is also in love with her, but it's a lot more complicated. Unlike the fair youth, who the poet finds as beautiful as the sun, my mistress eyes are nothing like the sun. When my love swears that she is made of truth, I do believe her. 
though I know she lies. In faith I do not love thee with mine eyes, for they in thee a thousand errors note." And again, we don't know for sure that these are meant to be read in Shakespeare's voice. For all we know, this is a fictional point of view character. Like, we can all enjoy Bohemian Rhapsody without thinking that Freddie Mercury literally just killed a man. But lots of songs and poems are about things that the author is genuinely going through, like Wake Me Up When September Ends is about Billy Joe Armstrong coming to terms with the death of his father, and Born This Way wouldn't have been written at all if not for Lady Gaga's bisexuality and her widespread fandom in the LGBT community. And if you're writing a sonnet at the time, there is an expectation that it is a love poem sent to the person that you're in love with, otherwise why wouldn't you just publish it? The thing is, we don't have very much written in Shakespeare's voice at all. We have 14 words in his own handwriting, 12 of which are just his signature. We've got a couple of legal records that mention him, we've got an epitaph that he might have written for a guy who lived near his theatre, and we have two dedications. So as well as the plays and the sonnets, Shakespeare also writes two long poems, Venus and Adonis and The Rape of Lucrece, which he dedicates to his patron, the Earl of Southampton. So this is quite a normal thing to do at the time, you write a nice poem, you dedicate it to a wealthy patron, and in return maybe they'll give you a couple of guineas, maybe they'll let you stay at their house, maybe they'll let you use their library. So the first dedication that he writes to the Earl is quite formal. I know not how I shall offend in dedicating my unpolished lines to your lordship, nor how the world will censure me for choosing so strong a prop to support so weak a burden. Only, if your honour seem but pleased, I account myself highly praised, and vow to take advantage of all idle hours till I have honoured you with some graver labour." So this is very boilerplate language for the time. He's basically saying, oh this rubbish little poem isn't worthy of you, but I hope you like it, and if you like it I'll be very proud, and I promise to write something better next time. And indeed, the next year he dedicates another poem to the Earl, and this time the dedication is a lot more personal. The love. Give me five seconds. Right. <laughs> Oh, I just came back. Sorry, I uh, th yeah, I wasn't ex expecting to, to to take longer, but I got I got pancakes out of it, so <laughs> that's good. I'm happy. I'm like the worst streamer ever, though. Like just like ran no stream schedule, nothing. Just like randomly streaming whenever, doing whatever the fuck I want. I'm so sorry. I dedicate to your lordship is without end, whereof this pamphlet without beginning is but a superfluous moiety. What mm. I have done is yours. What I have to do is yours. Being part- Wait, so Shakespeare sent a letter like to try and get money from someone, like a sonnet about someone that's called the the the, the rapé of Lucrece. What? In all I have devoted yours. It sounds like love, right? Even the act of getting a second dedication at all shows that there's definitely at least a reciprocal friendship between the two. Like, the Earl wouldn't have let him use his name twice if he didn't at least get on with the guy. Oh, have I been using this portrait to talk about the Earl of Southampton? I'm sorry, oh, this is a portrait from when he was older. Um, this is also a portrait of the Earl of Southampton from when he was younger. Shaboom! Maybe he's the fair youth! So the Earl of Southampton is married, in fact this is his wife, but there are I'm sorry, no, that, 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 that there is, is a self-portrait. Of you! Wait, what? Wait. Talk about the Earl of Southampton. I'm sorry, oh, this is a portrait from when he was older. Um, this is also a portrait. That looks so much like her! That looks like so much like her! Of the Earl of Southampton. I know, I know that, I know that the femboy thing. Yeah, definitely, so but like. Boom, boom, maybe he... Does. Does nobody else see this? He's the fair, yeah. You're a vampire! The Earl of Southampton is married and <laughs> She's a vampire! Wife, but there are rumours at the time that he's attracted to men, as we saw earlier. And that's it. As with anything to do with Shakespeare's thoughts and feelings, there's very little to go on in the historic record. We have church records of when he was married and when his children were baptised. We have his plays, which I argue don't really it, it wasn't it wasn't history back then a lot about what um like medieval history especially, you have to sift through so much um like, because uh, because the Christian historians would often write random stuff. So like, historians these days have to actually sift through and find out what's actually true or not because they made so much crap up. Anything about the playwright himself, the poems which are addressed to both a man and a woman, and the dedications for two long poems to the Earl of Southampton. Yeah. Although buggery is illegal in Shakespeare's time, very few people are ever convicted. Hate that word because the law requires witnesses 
And generally, there's only two witnesses to this sort of thing. And, I love. Uh, you don't see, I love saying bugger, but like actually Very using penis. it as that term. I saw William Shakespeare at the Devil's Sacrament. Girl, what were you My blood doing pancakes. No. Men sharing a bed is pretty common at this time. You might share a bed with relatives or servants. If you're staying at an inn, you might share one with the other customers. Even men kissing is very normal, which means also it is wild what the Black Death did like back in the day, like how it changed the, like it changed the entire wealth distribution back in the, back in its day. It was, in, it's insane. Like it went from like, you know, serfdom to like an actual middle class being created back in like, you know, the dark ages. It's insane. If you're Two men kissing is really normal. Oh, really? Ah, I can never remember his name. Gian Marco, I'm so sorry. I'm pretty sure it's at the start. Our next guest is a brilliant stand up comedian. Oh, so oh gosh, oh hello, gosh, oh gosh. Sorry, trigger warning, trigger warning, whoever that guy's name is that I can't remember that everyone hates for some reason. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 my name is Joe Marco. It's from living there. You know, it's good, it's good. I swear to God, the woman said, I think to our conversation. No, 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 that's not it. If you don't know Italians, we hug, we kiss, sometimes we get fired for it because it makes people uncomfortable. Like the first time my roommate saw my Italian father and I kiss each other goodbye, he was like, ew, do you kiss your dad in public? And I was like, yeah, yeah. You know what would be weird? If I only kissed him in private, if I was like, <laughs> hey, pops, let's get out of here for a proper goodbye. If you don't... <laughs> yep, sorry. I had to, I had to add that one in there. Wealthy Earl, you could probably get away with it. Oh, oh it, it turns out turns out culture has a lot of things, a lot of uh, things to say about gender stereotypes. Who who knew? Shakespeare's play, Henry V. The Dukes of York and Suffolk are both mortally wounded on the battlefield, and York kisses Suffolk on the lips in a last embrace as they die together. And instead of being seen as aberrant or suspect, this is played as a very touching moment between two brave cousins that makes everybody who hears about it cry. Wait, they're cousins? So did he turn, and over Suffolk's neck he threw his wounded arm and kissed his lips. And so, espoused to death, with blood he sealed a testament of noble ending love. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I just want to give a shout out to all the incredibly attractive names that are scrolling up your screen. Yeah, as Shakespeare, speak. maybe gay. Um, no, sure that there's something to it. To help me. Who knows? Like, um, I, I haven't looked too far into like, you know, Shakespeare as a person. Um, oh, it needs two each, does it? Oh, hold on. Give me a second. I shall fix this. Should also give some more of that. I didn't know that. But yeah, that's interesting. The Earl twist got you. Yeah, like... Yeah, I wish I knew more about, um... Shakespeare and that. Seems like it'd be, like... It's an interesting hist historical um, fact, in the ver at the very least. Is it? Damn!
Oh, actually, no. There. Yeah. yeah. I do it like that. Mm hmm. It's one of the musical. There's one of the musical cats in TSL. It's a bit weird. Really? Actually, there was something interesting that I did want to react to. I've had it, like, queued for, like, a while now. Maybe I'll find that right now. Ah, yes. How does this strike you? Um, here we go. Forest Valkai, I found the creationist Neil Breen, Gramps Goes to College, on Reacterio. Like, I, like, I, I purposely haven't pre-watched this one, because I was intending originally to watch it on stream. Because I love reacting to this stuff. Mm. Reacting to a react video. Ha! I am literal scum. Scum of the earth. I'm a streamer. Don't hate me, bro. What do you think about this? I think it's nice. Kind of makes the whole shot feel a little bit more three-dimensional, you know? I don't know. What about this? I'm going to pop it back to um, just chatting because um, I'm going to just do factory in the background until I, like, <clears throat> get to the point where I can't concentrate on two things at once. This one. That's pretty good. Huh? If it's the theme. Or... Is that like lights or is that just like an addition to his uh, setup? Because that looks pretty cool. This. Ooh. Yeah, no, that's really good. Uh... See, the coolest thing I ever saw was um, was Cat Black would just say, hey, Google, purple lights, and it would just do it. That was the coolest thing. Like for streaming, that's awesome. Uh, what about this one? Oh, yeah, no, that won't be distracting at all. Alright, well, probably, we'll stick with this one for now. I don't know. Welcome back to Reacteria. Hey, this Maggie time, Mayfish. Something a little bit different. Rather than Ooh. watching a short video full of NATO documents, oh my gosh. We're going to be watching a whole flippin' movie full of bad creationist arguments. Today, we're going to be watching Gramps Goes to College, a movie written by, produced by, and starring Donald James Parker. Written by... Produced by and starring. I'd like you to. That's never gone well. You know, there's never ever been a movie that has ever, you know, been good when you've written, when it's the, the acting in it, starring in it, directing and produced and, uh, you know, writing. I can't, I can't, I think I said it twice. Never. Never, never, ever. And I cannot remember what the movie is called. Damn it! Ah, you know, like you you just can't like direct and star in in a um in, in a movie like and and it'll just always be bad if you do that. You can't do that. No, never. Oh, what's this? One of the best movies ever. Seriously, if you haven't watched Kung Fu Hustle, you need to watch it. It's amazing. Director, Stephen Chow. Writer, Stephen Chow. Star, Stephen Chow. It's so good. Like, but like, you know, how did he manage to make such a good thing doing everything? That's not, that's not okay. You're not allowed. You're not allowed. You are not allowed. You're not allowed. But yeah, watch that movie. Keep that it's in good. mind as we go forward. Consume! Recommended to me several times, and with a whopping 1.7 stars on IMDb and no rating whatsoever on Rotten Tomatoes, I know it's gotta be good. But before we get started, you know I gotta thank my patrons on Patreon. They are, statistically speaking, the coolest people on the entire planet. And I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. 
It's NordVPN's birthday, and to celebrate, they're offering a huge discount off of a two-year plan, plus an additional bonus gift. If you sign up now, you can get at least four additional months or up to an entire year of Nord's world-class VPN service absolutely free. And all you have to do to get started is go to nordvpn.com slash Labs, or just use the link in the description below. Nord protects you from online threats and lets you use secure internet anywhere in the world, and with its ultra-fast connections with over... You, you you trying to find a video on how web browser on how web how web browser showed how quick capitalism crashes. Oh gosh. Web browser game. Oh, that's interesting. Servers and hey, I can play that game. You'll never have to sacrifice speed for security. Not to mention the fact that you can use NordVPN to trick online streaming services into giving you access to content that otherwise wouldn't be available in your region. So help Nord celebrate its birthday and take control of your internet privacy. Why is it a clown? NordVPN.com slash Labs. Thanks so much to Nord for sponsoring this video. Now grab your popcorn, let's learn about creationism. The movie opens with the titular hero, Gramps, otherwise known as Ty Bounds, working out with his friend. The very first lines of the film reveal that Ty has just retired. But as a self-proclaimed workaholic, he doesn't see this as an opportunity to stop working, but rather as an opportunity to work on something that he wants to, rather than something that he has to. You know, workaholics never retire, Ted. They just switch to something they want to work on instead of something they have to. And at this point in the film, I 100% identify with the main character. I love this dude. I don't know how to sit still either, even when I'm massively stressed and overwhelmed, all I'm fantasizing about is working on something else that I would rather be working on. So right away, this dude says something that really resonates with me, and I love that. And then he ruins it. Happy what fighting exactly sounds. Want to work on? Well, now that I don't need to need to make a living, I'm free full time to work on what God wants me to do. Come on, Ty, we could have been friends. So Ty decides that he's being called upon to go back to college. I'm not gonna go for another degree, just take some courses. Remember that, because that will change later. He also says that he specifically wants to go to a university in Tennessee to be closer to his estranged daughter. Got a daughter down there in Tennessee. Dwarf <laughs> Fortress. I try it down there even though she yeah? wants to talk to me. I mean, like, Minecraft shows how, like, capitalism fails, but, like, in a, like, roundabout way. Um, because it doesn't because because it can only work right um ca it can it can only work uh if you eh. Eh. cool um capitalism can only work if you have like infinite resources and you didn't have to worry about like shelter and sort of like stuff like that like capitalism only works in kid children's video games where you don't where the realities of life are like bugs <laughs> bugs to be patched out at least it'll give me a little sample of what life's like for her down there i'm just gonna go and spoil this right now that is the last time that you will ever hear about that at no point throughout the rest of this film does this guy ever even mention this daughter ever again we don't see her he doesn't reach out to her. There's no relationship building. She never even comes up. I have no idea why they took the time to put that line in this movie because the subplot starts and ends right there. And then Ty's gym buddy asks him why he wants to go back to college. And Ty lays out the entire plot of the movie in one long meandering line. You know, the majority of those kids don't realize the majority of their parents don't even realize those kids are being brainwashed by liberal, secular humanist professors who use their power over the mighty GPA and their, their influence over what? developing young minds. But I know that I can at least touch a few lives if I stand up and speak the truth in love. And maybe, just maybe, someone's going to grasp the concept that there really is a devil and he is working overtime to deceive us into all manners of destructive beliefs and behaviors. 
That's amazing. I love this that, that that is so amazing. Could you imagine if you were just like at the gym and saw and someone just said that to you at the at the gym? I'd be like, oh, dude, oh no, oh no. Like I have had the experience. Like there is there's someone. So I've had the experience where I've had people I know talk to me and they'll say. This is the this is the struggle I have because I love looking at this stuff and debunking it and like talking about it and discussing why this stuff like isn't real, um, or like not not real. Like I I am a Christian, but I don't believe in like the young Earth creationist uh, BS. Um, and it's fun talking about that on stream, but when someone you care about comes up to you and starts talking about you know like how you know we're all. W w that aliens um, came down uh, like in ancient times to create humanity, like by altering our DNA. Like, and you're face to face with someone who believes this, and it's so hard not to just say, "Well, that's wrong because this, 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 this." Like, it's hard to separate your my my desire to shut down pseudoscience when it comes to people i care about it's so hard or not only because it's just so heavy-handed and strange but also because there's a certain point but if it was like a friend or something like that i that you know i've been friends with for years i'd probably like give them crap about it i suppose but if it's like a workmate or like family can't do anything about that point where the guy working out in the background decides that the eight dollars he's getting paid for the scene just isn't worth it and so he just stops and sits there you're never gonna get cast in the next Black Panther movie with that kind of work ethic, Jeffrey, come on! We're then clumsily introduced to a new character named Stephanie, who's at odds with her mom because she won't buy her a new car after she drove drunk and crashed the last one. And it's revealed that the mom is already driving her to and from college and also paying for all of her tuition and that Stephanie is just super ungrateful and it's not gonna be any surprise what else they reveal about Stephanie. Didn't you tell us you were a religious geek when you started college? I was. But those days, they're all a distant memory. I mean, how can Jesus Christ be the son of God if science proves there is no God? Exactly. What? <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly an M. Science doesn't prove there is no God. What? Like, th there's a separate thing entirely. Like, God, God is based on a on faith. Science is based on studying the material reality of the world. The two can be compatible. Just don't try and overrule material reality with your personal faith-held beliefs. That's it. You can believe God created everything and believe that science is the study of how he created stuff. Like, come on. The Earth is more than 4,000 years? The sat satanic atheist bullshit to me. <laughs> yeah. I am the satanic Christian, apparently. Night Shyamalan-style <laughs> twist. Stephanie also says something really weird in this scene. She says that her dad wouldn't have to keep paying child support if she wasn't in college. This sucks, I hate it. If I was to quit school, dad wouldn't have to pay child support anymore. Which is something that I've never heard of. And then she also says- That's that such a weird thing just to fucking say. She's already 21. It's humiliating, I'm 21 now. So like, why is the now. dad still paying child support in the first place? Like, I've never heard of any situation where somebody's- Yeah, how did she manage to get her dad to pay child support? Mine didn't. Paying child support up to age 21, contingent on whether or yeah, not babe. that kid is in college. That's such a weird thing. I wrote to multiple lawyer friends asking about it. I checked the NCSL website. I was convinced that this must be important if they're going to be talking about it like this. And it's such a strange situation. And guess what? It isn't. Just like with Ty's daughter, that never comes up again. She doesn't drop out of school. She doesn't threaten to drop out of school. She never talks about her dad ever past this point. This is just another weird detail that they put in here for no reason, and I don't understand it. We then cut to the front desk of Ty's dorm, and Ty is absolutely flabbergasted to discover that this dorm is co-ed. Hi, can I help you? Oh, I hope so. I'm looking for Hickerson Hall. I thought this was it, but this appears to be a girls' dormitory. Oh, this is Hickerson. It's a co-ed dorm. Co-ed? He even ends this interaction by asking the front desk attendant to reassure him that he will have a male roommate. When I open up this door, 327, 
I'm not gonna find a female roommate behind it, I hope. <laughs> yeah, if you thought for one second that this movie wasn't gonna include all sorts of sexist overtones, why? So much did I see your cocky? Today's secret word is... Sexism. We then meet another major character, Michaela. She gets walked in by her dad, and this is the conversation that follows. I wish your mother could share this moment with us. So we're all very sad to hear about Michaela's mother, until the next line. Me too, but uh, if she hadn't taken the new job to help me get through school, you wouldn't have to drive me here. Total emotional roller coaster. Also, that is never mentioned again. This whole scene between Michaela and her dad, they detail out like all of the family dynamics of her and her parents, and not a single bit of it is relevant. We're never gonna see this dad after this scene, except for a brief interaction with Ty, where Ty promises to pray for Michaela. She's never gonna mention her parents. None of this is relevant in any way. There is so much detail added to the backstory of every single character, and it means nothing. It is insane. So Michaela gets checked in, and her roommate is Stephanie, who is her usual charming self. Oh, hi. You must be Stephanie. I'm Michaela Morris, I'm a freshman. That figures. You got a car? No, why? <sighs> no problem. I'll just have to mesmerize some boy with a nice car. You what the hell is this Honey. fucking show? I've got lots of them. Just really driving home just how wicked of an atheist this girl is. Ty then heads up to his room and meets his roommate, Snarf. His name is actually Snarf? Dad, but I didn't remember that. And I looked it up on IMDb, and it says that this is Rusty Martin playing Brad Hansen as Rusty Martin Jr. I know, right? They're gonna stop playing Dungeons and Dragons and, like, it's gonna, like, and fucking he's ruin everything. As Rusty Martin Jr. as well. So I don't know what any of that means. I'm just calling him Snarf. During this conversation, Snarf warns Ty that he better know how to use a computer if he's going to survive college, and Ty assures Snarf that he's had a long career in computer programming. I think I'll be okay in that area. I uh, was a data processing professional for 30 years as a computer programmer. I think you'll survive. <laughs> Yet another detail that will never come up again. And then we get this brief scene with Stephanie and her friends. I showed a clip of this earlier where Stephanie reveals that she's an atheist. And they all complain about how boring Michaela is because she's a Christian. I can't believe it. I have Joan the Baptist for a roommate. And then they all Joan decide the Baptist. they need to what? make their mission to like corrupt Michaela and convert her to atheism oh, as well. I did this Look at it this way. You have the chance to change a saint into a sinner. <laughs> Good point. Why is that funny? I found satisfaction in something this year. Where is this scene going? In all seriousness though, that never comes up again either. That's yet another subplot that starts and ends right there. And then, in case you'd forgotten, the movie slaps you in the face with the plot one more time as Ty meets with who I'm assuming is an academic advisor and asks if it's possible for him to get a master's in biology as a creationist. Well, I believe that God created the universe and everything in it, but I would like to get my master's in biology. I'm not going to go for another degree, just take some courses. But I would like to get my master's in biology. I told you it would change. Anyway, the advisor replies with this. I see then your chances of being accepted as a graduate student is approximately equivalent to the prospects of a snowball surviving in hell. Because that's how academics talk. And then he says this. And that assessment has nothing to do with my age. Your age is of no concern to us. Your superstitions and your refusal to accept sound science is. Then I suggest what the hell? Take by like people, people just aren't like they're not everyone is a Richard Dawkins. One hundred from Professor Tucker. She'll coax this this creationism from you, because that's how advisors talk. And then Ty ends the scene with this well, epic. I mean, like yeah, the the Dante's Inferno has it as like freezing to you know encase the devil in ice and all that sort of stuff. But like, come on. Fine. Ironically, the word biology means the study of life. Evolutionists leave out the most important thing about life. In fact, they teach us more about death 
than they do life. What? Because what that's how about? interactions between humans end. Because there's more things dead than have ever been alive. What are you talking about? End. From there, we go to Dr. Like, there's more to talk about when dead Dr. things. infamous biology class. And remember, this is an introductory freshman level biology course being taken by the man who just asked to get a master's in biology with no prior biology training on his very first day of college. This is also the first part where it becomes really abundantly clear that they filmed this whole movie inside of a church as the professor steps up to the clear podium on the large tiered stage at the front of an auditorium which has no desks. And as if not knowing what a college classroom looks like wasn't bad enough, the producer then proves that he doesn't know what happens in a college classroom because Dr. Tucker starts her very first lecture like this. I'd like to start this semester with a question. I would like all of you who believe that God created the universe and life as it is to stand up. What yeah, the hell? Is this some sort of like, fe like creationist fever dream? Like who talks like that? Who we, like we in, at university? I'm sorry, we don't even talk about God unless it's got something to do with like theology. Like wh when it's relevant. Why do they think? Why do these people think that they're always under because attack? You cling to the superstition, but by the time you finish my course, almost no one stands to confess this foolishness. And in case it isn't abundantly clear, that would never. Also, if she actually said that, in, I don't know about America. America is a crazy place that I really don't understand. I just don't understand it. But in Australia, you'd probably get fired for that, rightly so, because you're being discriminatory. It's like you have protections under the law not to be discriminated against for your religion in that way and you know you shouldn't be con discriminated against like that that's not fucking that's not fucking okay i don't understand that would be absurdly inappropriate for any professor christian persecution complex the, do you mean the 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 christian the christian persecution uh industrial complex oh this is uh 20 minutes long Ooh. Uh. So yeah. Yeah. Classroom. Shaping young minds is what I do. It's easier than working with minds that have been filled with a lifetime of superstition, folklore. Well, I mean, I definitely agree with that part, but that's not the point. But I. Okay, who hurt her? Who fucking hurt her? This is what I want to know. Fully embrace the challenge of bringing light into your darkness. Ditto. Next, it's time for lunch in this very modern, very active, not at all pieced together by people who use the words college educated as an insult, completely real university cafeteria. Hi. Hi. Michaela Morris, I'd like to present to you my roommate. <laughs> yeah. Stephanie immediately takes a liking to Snarf, or at least she pretends to in order to get access to his truck. And you might be thinking that this is a continuation of the subplot from earlier where Stephanie wants to borrow somebody's car. And it is! But it is also the end of that plot. Because this never comes up again in any meaningful way. There are a couple of parts where it shows her driving his truck, but that's it. It never affects the plot at all. This action bears no consequences. The entire story arc here was that she wanted to drive somebody's car, and so she did. We're then introduced to one of the main antagonists. At least somebody's film, getting, getting what they want out of this. Who I don't think ever actually got a name in the film. If he did, I didn't care. You find some new crew to hang out with this year? Yeah, I've decided to hang out with Homo sapiens this year. The Neanderthal thing was getting a little old. Neanderthal? Really? Is that a way to speak to an old flame? That flame went Um, actually, like, dating a Neanderthal is actually, um, you know, well, I don't know about dating is the right word, but, like, it was actually quite a important, uh, 
important thing to regain um, the genetic data lost uh, through the near extinction of uh, Homo sapien. Not so totally, but there is no evidence that it ever existed. Your mouth's saying one thing, but your eyes are telling me you still want me. Ew! Oh, why does it always have to be rapey? It's too much. It's too much. I'm sorry. It's too much. I, that was just such a gross line at the end of such an awkward interaction. I, I just, I had to break the tension somehow. We then get to the movie's second major plot. In fact, this actually gets more overall screen time than the whole evil evolutionist professor thing does. So really, this is more like the main plot of the movie. There's a big intramural championship going on, and the ex-boyfriend is going to be leading his team of jocks to victory. And so in response, Ty decides to start his own team with a few special rules. We only want to recruit people that love the Lord. You know, we're gonna, I want to name the team Sons of the King. In that moment, we were all Stephanie. By the way, not even two minutes after this, there is exactly one instance when a couple of kids show some interest in joining Ty's team, but then the movie forgets about that subplot as well, and so the only people we ever actually see and compete are Ty and Snarf. Also, the ex-boyfriend's team is later revealed to be called the Demons, because this movie has exactly one note, and it is going to play the crap out of it. But don't forget, this film has a job to do, and it's not just tell the story of a terrible old man who doesn't understand college. It's also to spread what Donald James Parker thinks are hard-hitting creationist arguments. Enter the computer club. We're part of the computer club, and we heard you were a computer guy, but also a creationist. How can that be? So where did the information come from that controls the function of the brain? This question makes little sense. Brains evolve function along with form. I must point out that in order for something to evolve, it must exist previously. This question makes no sense at all. We have plenty of examples of new structures evolving, even new brain structures. And then you have to ask yourself the question in the first place. How did this organism survive without a brain in order so it could develop a brain later? Lots of living things don't have... Oh gosh, that's so dumb. Brains. What's... There are even lots of animals that don't have brains. There are even lots of animals with nervous systems that don't have brains. So, what came first? The blood? Or the brain? Or the lungs? Literally blood, then brain, then lungs. And there are plenty of animals to date. <laughs> I love that. I love that. He's just like, yes, like there is an answer to these questions. That's what these that's what these people depend on, like people not actually knowing the answers to these questions. Because there are answers for all of these questions. I don't have one or But there's all always three gonna be another things. question. None of these questions are hard. There's also this weird scene after Stephanie and Snarf leave where Michaela laments the fact that she wanted to get with Snarf, but Stephanie picked him first, and Ty assures her that they won't be together long because Stephanie is a double-minded woman. You know, I have a really good feeling about Snarf. Stephanie, ah, uh, not so much. A double-minded woman is unstable in all her ways. In all our ways? And in case there the was any doubt in your mind, no, that subplot will never be resolved either. There is one point towards the end of the film when the ex-boyfriend tells Stephanie that Michaela has her eye on her boyfriend and Stephanie gives Michaela a weird look. And that's it. Stephanie and Snarf stay together throughout the movie. They stay together after the movie. Michaela never makes a move on Snarf. This is just another useless subplot that goes absolutely nowhere. And before we get a chance to move on to the next scene, the movie makes sure to bludgeon you with the message just one more time. I used to think that universities were supposed to teach us how to think. But I'm starting to realize that they're trying to teach us what to think. Bingo. Because when you've been taught to think in terms of dogma, is this true? Americans in the chat, can you confirm that um, that American colleges don't teach critical thinking? Because that's, that, you know, scary, if true, but literally first thing that you learn here in Australia. Like, quite literally, every single um, introductory to Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts, like, doesn't matter what you choose, um, they are going to teach you how to think independently. That's, like, University slash college 101. 
Okay, so it is so so it is the opposite. So they are so they are just lying. Okay. Phew. That was uh yeah, that was uh scary for me. Goodness. People are weird. Americans are weird. You assume that everybody else only thinks in terms of dogma. So now we're back in Dr. Tucker's class, and Ty asks the most absurd question of the entire movie. And it's very obvious from the way that this scene is set up that this was meant to be the most effective and thought-provoking question of the entire movie. And seeing this much drama built up around something so utterly brainless makes it just ten times funnier. I'm sorry, but I'm really having trouble getting a handle on this natural selection. Could you explain its properties to me? Properties? Yeah, you know, size, weight, color. What's its chemical composition? Does it matter? Is it energy? Well, it doesn't have properties. Oh, I need to listen to this again. Wait, what? Properties. Natural selection. Could you explain its properties to Natural selection? Can you explain the properties of Einstein's theory of relativity? I mean, are, are you serious? It's it's a th it it's a general theory. Like, it, it it's the best answer we have. It's not it doesn't have properties in and of itself. It's a social construct, like all language. What the fuck? <laughs> what? Properties. This is the dumbest yeah, question you know, ever. Size, weight, color. What's its chemical composition? Does it matter? Is it energy? Well, it doesn't have properties. It provides effects that we readily see in the lab or in nature. So something that has no physical properties whatsoever causes living <laughs> organisms to mutate? Some examples of other things... <laughs> Did you mean to think me when you asked this? <laughs> uh, don't, no, no, I refuse. I, I, I refuse. I will bring up the word theory over and over and over and over again and explain it to people over and over and over and over again until more people understand. Uh, a theory is, in, in the world of science, a theory is the closest we can come to objectivity. There is no objectivity in reality you cannot hand me your thoughts you cannot hand me your sight you cannot communicate objectivity to me but through collaboration collaborative efforts to understand the world around us we can come to a consensus about how things work that is in science called a theory that is the closest we have come to proving God within a scientific pro framework. To put it in a way that a Christian might understand. You know? Like, nothing... God cannot be proven as much as objectivity can. We can only be as objective as we can agree to be in a subjective basis. That is why we use the, the word theory, because there is always room for improvement when it comes to understanding the world around us. Anyone who tells you that they think they know the truth is a complete imbecile. And you should listen to more people before coming to your own conclusion. But that is just my subjective opinion on the matter. Some examples of other things which have no physical properties and yet still have very obvious real-world effects would include democracy, justice, evaporation, peer pressure, and paying attention in class. Remember kids, paying attention in class doesn't have a size or a shape or a color. It isn't matter or energy. But if you do it, you won't ask silly questions like tie bounds. And then we get this scene between Stephanie and Snarf, and I'm just gonna Starf. let this play for a second. Snarf. Nice. Yes. Oh. 
Oh my gosh, this is a weird. 35 seconds, wow, that is some dead air. Now I know why he said Neil Brain. That's how this scene starts. For 30... I was thinking as well if anyone was interested in doing some um, React streaming. So like, um, maybe doing... Like reacting to an episode or something on like a private server or something. So it's not like through Twitch or monetized or like, you know, recorded or anything like that. Um, and then coming on coming on live to a stream, um, so people in the Discord could enjoy that, and then co or like go doing it through like the um, Amazon like w watch play or whatever it's called, and then um, doing having a conversation. So like doing a live version of Red Letter Media, basically. That was something I was like playing with. I need I need to find like some um, other people who are interested in doing that with me though. So that'd be cool. Five seconds. And then Stephanie asks Snarf if he wants to go to a party, and he says yes. Yarf. And that takes less time than this whole bit. This scene is mostly them arriving and making weird noises at each other. Why? <laughs> so that scene ends as soon as it started. And now we're in a meeting between Dr. Tucker and another professor, where she indirectly reminds everybody that Donald James Parker wrote, produced, I'd like to, to go through uh, the original Trigun anime. Would be nice. And stars in this movie. It's been a while since I've had such a worthy adversary. I have a thing for um, for Jesus analogs in uh, media, and the way that they're like presented. I like it. Just the the ideas that it brings forth interest me. It's just it's just something that um, I, I like thinking about like you know like one of the cool things about trigun is thinking about um what like you know putting myself in the shoes of someone like vash the stampede who's the main character like and his clash with knives which is his brother um really comes down to two godlike creatures beliefs about what their role is within society like what they should be what their responsibilities are as these like unimaginably powerful beings you know what i mean um and just like my criticism my criticism i have criticisms of that idea because i don't feel like it's ever been really well done in media like that exploration you know like it, it's it's always it's always on one side someone some evil guy who wants to control everything and on the other side it's always like some good guy who wants to stop the bad guy from doing the thing and it's never really explored like it basically it's 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 the it's media exploring the ideas surrounding um <sighs> revolution Revolutionary change versus, um, like, uh, ref uh, revolutionary ch change versus, uh, reform, reformist change. <sighs> Took a long, lot, lot to come out of my mouth. I don't know what's going on. I've got general anxiety, so all of a sudden. What constitutes the qualifications for worthy? Bold, intelligent. Handsome. I do think that there is a place for reformists, just like how, just like I believe that my place as an anarchist is to work together with um, uh, state state communists in order to come to a better society. We need to have a diversity of tactics and a d diversity of um, ideas. Um, otherwise, we won't survive. We have <laughs> these are things that we need to like cultivate in ourselves. And in our communities, so you know, state state communists will end up creating totalitarian um, re may. Sorry, it's not it's not like you know, completely like yes, this this is something that will definitely happen. It's more like we need to understand that. I don't know. How do I drop this? You? What the hell? What button do I use to drop things? <gasps> Z! Nice. Okay. But yeah. 
yeah we need to we need to work together um i i don't think that uh, i think that there are people who need to be put into positions of uh, organization and there are people who need to push back against those um unjustified hierarchies in, ju- in the same way we need to always be thinking about how we can reform our tactics there's always the the you should never dismiss political thought we should always like work to work together to make it better in my opinion. I guess some women might find him attractive. Do you? Are you getting personal, Vaughn? What, what the fuck do is this shit? Call a male Mary Sue. Then Dr. Tucker's professor friend hits on her and she replies by saying that his wife wouldn't approve. Well, you know I'm jealous. Oh, I'm so sorry that the mutual attraction's not on my end. And... And besides, I just think your wife might object. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> See, he's okay with cheating because he's an atheist liberal college professor. Just in case that wasn't clear. And now Dr. Tucker meets Ty for coffee and the conversation is worse than their last one. Not all scientists and scholars accept that you and I descended from some ape-like creatures which descended from some lower life yeah. forms which all- It's understandable to be. It's Gary Stu. <laughs> Lol. What, but why Gary? I mean, yeah, I understand Monkey Gamer. Like, I understand completely. Like, the 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 disappointment is real, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I definitely definitely feel you there. Like, that's yeah, it sucks. Um, I just think that you know can definitely. I, I would it's not so much I, I it's it's not so much like oh we need to um, spend time and effort um, trying to get people to you know trying to make people see our side of you that's not what I'm getting at I'm just saying don't write those people off but don't expend your energy on them either you know what I mean It's just wasted energy. Cell organisms. Well, those people blame, are an indefinite minority. Blame Star Trek. Fanfic <laughs> writers. And you and your peers are trying your best to make sure it remains that way, using suppression of freedom of thought. You're a bright gal. I'm pretty sure you get my point. You know, many creationists are also members of Mensa, but you consider them to be morons because they won't accept the gospel of Charles Darwin. If you're right and there is the gospel, no God, uh, Charles Darwin didn't write a gospel. Charles Darwin is was was wrote the, you know, the basics of um, evolution, which we built upon. Like, why do they think that that people worship Charles Darwin? Just just shut up about Charles Darwin. People give Charles Darwin way too much air. It bothers me so. You'll never get that chance to yell, Yippee! I win! There is no eternal life. Because you'll just be dust. And then Dr. Tucker invites what? Ty to her house for a private one-on-one -on -one dinner to continue this conversation. How about I treat you to dinner sometime? Where would we eat? My house? Yeah, I think I'd like to make something special. Yet well, yeah, we've moved faster. This professor does that is wholly inappropriate and should never happen ever. Then we cut to Steph and Snarf at the party, and the ex boyfriend gets all flustered about the fact that Steph doesn't want him anymore. I don't need you, Steph. There are plenty of hot girls at this party. There are two women at this party, mm. and you're clearly drinking apple juice. So Snarf goes back to the dorm, <laughs> not even a little visibly drunk. Sorry, forest burns are amazing. Like alcohol, he gets a stern talking to from Ty. With the sexual revolution in full bloom, Stephanie probably believes that premarital sex is just fine. You know, a pretty woman can entice a man into trouble. That no, I mean, like it is just fine. Like as long as you're, it's informed consent, and people are using protection. Like, why would that not be okay? Unless, you know, you some weird sort of uh, puritanical, have weird puritanical beliefs. Why can I never, like, pick up the stones? It just seems weird to me that I can't pick up items off of, um... What? 
Why could I do that then? Why did it work suddenly? Wait, do I need to like zoom in to do it? It's, no, no, it just, it just worked. Okay, it just works sometimes. Sometimes it just works. Oh, that's right. I remember now. You have to be standing on it. Oh, okay. You couldn't drag him into. Sorry. And now it's time for the intramural championships to begin. Did you forget about the intramural championships? Well, buckle up because we're playing chess. And wouldn't you know it, the guy who wrote, produced, and stars in the movie and has so far outsmarted every person he's come across, regardless of their level of education, is also a freaking chess grandmaster who easily defeats every opponent and wins the competition for his team. Definitely didn't, Neil Brain. What? No way. I was so focused on my offense, I lost track of what you were doing. It happens. Good game. Hail to the intramural chess champion. <laughs> but the weirdest part of this scene has got to be this conversation. Aren't you that anti-science guy? I'm not anti-science. I am anti-BS. Anti-BS. So you mean to tell me you think science is BS? No. Not if it's practiced in the way it's intended, using a strict application of the scientific method. But much of what passes for science today is misinformation, propaganda, and downright lies. Really? Like? Evolution in particular. Anything else? You will never guess what he's about to say. Go ahead and try. What's Feminism. the weirdest, most off-the-wall thing that a creationist would oh, believe in? Oh, wait. Okay, wait. Weirdest off-the-wall thing? Uh, okay. It wouldn't be flat earth, would it? Or climate change. All right, climate change. Is it the Big Bang? Lock in climate change. Is it dinosaurs? Is it vaccines? Go ahead, go to the comments right now and tell me what you think Ty thinks isn't actual science. And if you get it wrong... <laughs> <laughs> the female orgasm, oh, okay. <laughs> That's the game. For example, uh, fluoridation of the drinking water. When the government supplies the drinking water, I don't have a choice, and they're basically forcing me to ingest poison. Okay, Alex. This isn't a Gary Stew, this is an Alex Jones. Did you know that our supply of sodium fluoride is now being provided by China? God. That's right, it's fluoride in the drinking water. I was not expecting him to go to China. What, what is, what? Why? What? Fluoride doesn't make the population docile, and why would you not want the population to be do more docile? Literally, look at how reducing lead has led to the massive reduction in crime globally since the, you know, since the removable, removal of lead from, you know, uh, petrol. Just that alone has just, has completely made the crime rates drop. That alone. And he's talking about how he doesn't want, like, even if fluoride did have properties that uh, made the population more docile, that's not a bad thing, because docile is not a bad thing. Being able to have rational thought is a not a bad thing. It's when the opposite of that happens. It's a bad thing. My gosh. No, you did People not don't... get that right. There is no way you guessed that. The government is buying fluoride from China and using it to poison us. That's what that crazy old man just said, and you owe me a subscription. Then there's this brief scene in the cafeteria where Stephanie and her ex-boyfriend oh, get already into subscribed. an argument, and nice. rather than defending her... Like and subscribe. Hold on. I know he's got millions of views already, so... But, like, seriously. 100? 100, 100, only 190k views. I thought he, that he did better than that. Snarf mm. physically grabs her face to shut her up. What do you know about maturity? Why don't oh, you just... Okay. Yeah, control her. What are you doing? I'm trying to... Oh... <laughs> If anyone did that to me, they would be leaving in a fucking stretcher. How much of a little dignity you have left? I disavow violence. I was just a joke. He then starts giving her a Bible lesson, and she responds like this. Blessed is the peacemaker for... That, that. <laughs> what? 
What is happening in this movie? What was that? Oh yeah, and then Ty wins the two mile race. The 60 something year old retired computer programmer who's also wicked smart and amazing at chess, he wins the two mile foot race against all the 20 something year old college athletes. To celebrate, Ty offers everyone milkshakes, but Stephanie declines that she can stay behind and invite Snarf to go drinking again, and Snarf says no because of the talk that he had with Ty. The party's tomorrow night, and I kind of want to warm up for it tonight. Stephanie, I can't go out drinking again. Not after that talk I had with Ty. This young man is refusing to drink with his girlfriend because he doesn't want to disappoint his elderly college roommate. It, it's such a weird vibe throughout this entire part of the movie, dude. We're then treated to this scene where Ty goes to Dr. Tucker's house for dinner. This scene made me genuinely uncomfortable. We start off strong with Dr. Tucker saying this. I do consider males the weaker of the two sexes. Which I can only assume is what Donald James Parker thinks feminism is. I don't know. Then we make our way into the kitchen where they forgot to take the cross. Um, Forrest, the two sexes? Not gonna say anything about that? <sighs> Cancel! off the wall. Then we leave the kitchen where they forgot to take the sound guy out of the mirror. And then Ty refuses to drink wine because... I always found it interesting that when food ferments, they throw it away, but with beverages, they put them on a pedestal after fermentation. So I guess he isn't interested in any other fermented things, like pickles, or sauerkraut, or cheese, or yogurt, or kombucha, or sourdough bread. Thanks for yet another weird take, Ty! During this part, Dr. Tucker takes off her jacket and then starts making fun of Ty for probably wanting to say grace. So, are you now going to do that ritual where you tell God what a good father he is for showering you with manna from heaven? Which is yet another just unreasonably crappy thing for this professor, let alone just this human being to do. And her taking off her jacket has a visible effect on Ty, and so then this happens. Oh, I'd like to. Oh, good. Um, well, you do that, and then I'll start drinking my wine and yours. Oh, Close she's down. Eyes. I want to lay a surprise on you. Hmm. Okay. No, but seriously, though, it's it's actually just awful. What are you doing? I'm hot. Do you want me to look at you while we're talking? Well, of course. Then you have to cover up your charms. What the hell? I may be a scout, but a saint, but I want to be, so an ounce of prevention's worth a pound of cure. This guy can't share a room with a woman. He warns about the dangers of drinking with a woman. He can't even focus on a conversation with a woman when she's wearing a completely appropriate outfit that she could easily wear to work. Like, at what point do you think this guy's gonna realize that he's the problem here, and maybe he should focus on keeping himself under control? Spoiler alert, it's never, because purity culture's insane. And then the date moves to the couch, and of course the topic turns back to evolution. And then this happens. Have you ever considered that maybe there really is a heaven and a hell, and that people like you are condemning young people to an eternal punishment because of your teaching? Have you ever considered just grabbing me and having some fun? And I can't even, like, make a joke about that, because then when Ty refuses her advances, she tries to just force herself on him. Oh, that's okay, cringe. so if you won't take advantage of me, then I am gonna take advantage of you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So Ty leaves, and Dr. Tucker becomes enraged at the fact that any man would have the audacity to turn her down, and so she chugs her wine and then drives drunk around town looking for Ty in order to give him a piece of her mind, which is such a weird and specific and repeated phrase. I'm gonna give him a piece of my mind. I gotta give him a piece of my mind. That it makes it really hard to discern if this guy just isn't a very good writer and he didn't know any other way to say, I'm gonna tell him off or I'll show him or something like that. Or if this is a thinly veiled misogynistic code to imply that this woman and her mind are the problem here. 
<laughs> uh, maybe I'm reading too much into this, but I don't think that Yeah, I maybe. Am. So she runs into Professor McCheater Pants, and they drive off to find Ty, and then we come to a big moment in the film, which takes place at a party with Snarf and Stephanie. You see, Stephanie has entered into a drinking competition, during which she takes 20 shots of Everclear, and then drops dead. And that's not me trying to be funny with this scene. She didn't pass out. She didn't slowly succumb to alcohol poisoning. She took her 20th drink and then just died. I'm pretty mad. What was she drinking? That was uh, Everclear, 190 proof. What? Are you crazy? Someone call 911. What? Oh my god. She has no vital signs. What are you saying? What? I'm saying she's, she's dead. <laughs> What? Yeah, 20 shots in three minutes. Oh man, we gotta get out of here. We can get yeah, I'm 20 shots. It sounds like you had 30, this mate. Pre med student then swiftly doesn't administer CPR, but fortunately, Michaela had found Ty and brought him to the party to help. But before he can, Dr. Tucker shows up to give Ty a piece of her mind, causing Snarf to say, Why did your teeth get something useful in biology? Like how alcohol fries their brain cells even kills people. Yeah, you waste your time these historical fairy tales about evolution! Because all of these adult college students had no idea that alcohol could be dangerous. Not even the pre-med student who was at the party in the drinking competition. Okay! <laughs> But don't worry, kids. Michaela prays over Stephanie, and Stephanie miraculously comes back to life to tell us all that she saw hell. A fire. What? I saw fire. Okay. Or maybe it was a barbecue. She doesn't go into any more detail than that, so who knows? Maybe she just had a vision of some food that wasn't mayonnaise, and that freaked her out. These people don't seem to know what fun is, so it's hard to tell what frightened her. This series of events prompts Dr. Tucker to walk outside and remember the wise words of Ty Bounds. And so she starts asking her professor colleague some of the same questions that Ty had asked her earlier. Well, how does that emotion fit in with evolution? I mean, that's the part that's never made any sense. You know, we teach that the, the universe is comprised of matter and energy. Can information be considered matter or energy? Evolution is caused by changes in the genes of the organisms that are comprised of information. But where does that information come from that makes those mutations possible? Come on, you're, you're drunk. And just like that, <laughs> Professor Cheatface is the most reasonable person in the movie. No, not so much. Actually, I think at this moment, I am seeing more clearly than I ever have in my life says every drunk person ever. And if you thought that that was the climax of the film and now it's gonna be over, you're wrong. There's still 30 minutes left. We then cut to the hospital where Stephanie is recovering and she goes into the chapel to begin rebuilding a relationship with her mother. During this scene, Stephanie asks her mother, Mom, do you believe in the devil? And the mother replies, yes, and... All your college professors, all the entertainment professionals, what the Around hell you. is this? Listening to him and helping to deceive other kids like you. <laughs> Based. I want to be at that college. Honey, you drank an entire Stephanie bottle of wine. That she's gonna Don't judge. With Snarf. But this time, for Jesus. Snarf. Jesus. Snarf. Then in the next scene, it's revealed that Dr. Tucker is no longer teaching biology. Professor Tucker is no longer employed by this university. I'll be your temporary instructor until a replacement can be found. Any clue what happened? I'm not sure. But I think that maybe she found God Friday night, and either she can't bring herself to teach this junk anymore, or... Oh my gosh. They won't let her. Or maybe she was fired for aggressively trying to sleep with a student and then driving drunk. The world may never know. 
And then Ty, who I'll remind you, is played by Donald James Parker, who also wrote and produced this entire movie, beats everybody in basketball, including the ex-boyfriend. But the ex-boyfriend isn't giving up that easily, so he hires the only black person in the entire movie to frame Ty for buying alcohol for minors. An obvious lie, which the university immediately believes without doing any investigation, and so Ty is expelled. Expelled? You know, that's a great title for a movie. In case you didn't catch that, he's referring to the pseudo-documentary Expelled, which is Ben Stein's movie in which he says that there's a conspiracy within academia to destroy free speech and force out anybody who doesn't believe in evolution, and that the belief in evolution... It seems like these people have never actually been to, like, a educational institution in their lives. Like, that's, that, that's all I can assume from any of this is that they have never they've just never this is so weird to me pollution leads to fascism and eugenics and so is also one of the causes of the holocaust wow it's a deeply gross movie and i'm not surprised that this guy likes it enough to reference it here then ty delivers this wow. line you know, the truth that man was made in God's image must never bow down to that, that lie that says that man is no more important than any other species. I have never in my life heard the word... But they're trying to stop people from teaching certain things. Isn't that exactly the same thing? Like, it, they're, just, they're just doing the same thing that they think that colleges are doing. That's just weird to me. Species. I've heard the word species which can be singular or plural, one species of deer, several dozen species of ferns, either one works, but I have never, ever, ever heard the word species. I looked it up, and it is a word. It means money in the form of coins rather than notes. I didn't know that! How interesting! It's not a biological term, and the guy who wrote and produced and stars in a movie about outsmarting all of his biology professors thinks that that's a word to refer to an individual species and why am i surprised by that then it's time for the final competition in the intramurals which is tennis which ty is amazing at by the way but because he can't compete himself because he's been expelled he decides to teach snarf how to be a world-class tennis champion over the course of a two and a half minute long montage in which we also see Ty leading Bible studies for old people and playing with puppets and playing duck duck goose with little children. It is such a long and awkward sequence and there's still over 15 minutes left of this movie! Then the ex-boyfriend drops by to gloat about the fact that he got Ty kicked out of school and so now he's easily gonna win the tennis tournament. Oh well, guess I'll just waltz on through. Well, I know from experience that if you do any waltzing, you're gonna be stepping on somebody's feet. Please, I'm the best dancing partner you've ever had. Oh please, I'd rather partner with the abominable snowman. What a weird... all of that. Then we get another montage as Snarf and the ex-boyfriend compete you don't trust the him with kids, yeah. And we keep cutting back to Stephanie and Michaela, making it painfully obvious that they are the only two other people in the room. Yes! That's a set at 6-4. One down, one to go. Come on! Snarf. What a crowd! And wouldn't you know it, Snarf beats the ex-boyfriend and wins the championship, and watching this entire movie is worth it for this one part right here. Come on! Yes! We did it! Yes! All right! Way to go, kiddo! You go to hell! You go to heaven! Heaven! Jace, I'm gonna be praying for you. Don't waste your breath. Prayer's never a waste. Hey, God, I just don't racket. trust him in general. Neil Brain's no better than take. this. No do-overs. Cut, print, it's going in the movie just like that. The audio cutting out, the badly flubbed line, it was perfect. Also, apparently the ex-boyfriend's name was Jace the whole time. Who knew? That's movie magic right there. So now we're in the final stretch, and it's time to wrap everything up. And the ending begins with Ty, Michaela, and Stephanie all walking out of a room that they were all in together for some reason. 
and then they just stand outside of that same room and talk together for a really long time. I don't know why they were in that room together. They never explain why they're in that room together. I know the joke that I want to make, but honestly, you can only make that same joke so many times and it's just not funny anymore. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that was the last one. During this scene, Michaela gives Ty a cross necklace and Stephanie gives him a letter from Dr. Tucker confessing that she has renounced her faith in evolution and is now a Christian. Then, after a long and tearful goodbye, the trio walk out of another door into a hallway full of Ty's cheering fans. What is all this? It's your fan club. What? And everybody clapped! <laughs> what? Oh, this is amazing. But can you what blame is this? them for cheering? After all, this is Ty Bounds, the 60-something-year-old retired computer programmer and championship athlete and tennis pro and chess master, and basketball star, and academic whiz, who also just happens to be played by the person who wrote and produced this film. I swear, the only thing this guy is more obsessed with than sex is himself. This entire movie is just one of those Reddit stories that totally happened and then everyone started clapping. And that trend continues as we go back to biology class, now sans tie, and Michaela raises her hand to challenge the new professor. You guys freak out anytime the name of God is mentioned. What are you so afraid of? The law of biogenesis. Life only comes from life. If that's true, at some point in time, that law had to be broken. I can't remember the difference between the scientific um, definition of law. Uh, scientific definition of uh, law. Uh, okay, so it appears to always be true. Okay, so it's something that's uh, used within a theory. So, yeah. it's uh, This is what you, you were talking about done randomly. Where they use words like law and um, theory interchangeably to try and make it sound... Like, oh, that's just a theory, but this is a law. But, like, a law is usually something that can be uh, used to predict behavior, I believe. Um, theory is a, like, encompassing um, scientific understanding, such as uh, the theory of re relative relativity, which is, like, a, more than just an equation. Uh, yeah. This is just a misunderstanding of biogenesis, uh, but unfortunately for her argument, uh, we have already created life from non-living material in a lab, so it's quite, uh, yeah, we, we, we've, we've definitively proven, wait until these people think if it was the chicken or the egg that came first. Um, the answer to that question is yes. In order for life to begin. And then Bobby Bullcut here gets in on the smackdown. The phenomena of defining gravity is seen on a daily basis. Our textbook teaches that life only originated one time. If it happened once... We've seen it. We've seen it. The, the only reason why... Um, uh, what is it? Uh, life originating from non... Living things is cool. I, a biogenesis is now our current understanding of how life started. We, we've we've replicated it in a lab, and the reason why we haven't actually seen it on Earth since is because when you have those conditions, those nutrient-rich conditions um, that require that are required for biogen uh, a biogenesis to occur, um, the things that are already alive come in, swoop in, and take those uh, materials. So that that's why we don't see it, because there is already life. Once there is already life, it is very hard for abiogenesis to actually occur naturally, devoid of other life. It ha Basically, abiogenesis 
can only occur where there is no life. That is why we can't see it. It starts at microscopic levels and many Christians still deny germ. We've known about germ, germ theory since what? 1700s? 1800s? Fucking hell. So why did it happen multiple times? The idea of life springing up through an encounter of certain molecular elements is as ridiculous as thinking I could shake up a can of Legos. Well, I mean, like, you're just wrong, then. You just don't understand how the world works. And that's okay. A lot of people don't understand how things work. But don't try and impose that on, you know, other people's education. <laughs> ah, what the hell? I'm not trying to shoot shit. Jeez. Dang it. And pour them out as a sophisticated building. Well, let me quote Fred Hoyle, the man who perhaps drummed up the phrase Big Bang Theory. He said the chance of life generating itself from non-living matter was about like the chance of a tornado going through a junkyard and reassembling a Boeing jet. I have yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He said that the guy who like was describing how the universe was created and has an understanding of how of cha how chances work, like yeah, like, that's actually quite a very large chance considering the size of our universe. Like, <laughs> no idea if Fred Hoyle actually said that, but it is important to point out that while he did coin the term Big Bang, he did so in order to mock the idea of the Big Bang because he thought the universe was eternal and had no beginning. So yeah. not only is this quote mining, it's like extra double silly quote mining. Yeah, so I guess, so I guess, um, it, it's kind of like retaking queer. Hi, I'm Bobby. I want to thank you for standing up and speaking out today. It gave me the courage to do the same. Ty was always there to speak. Now he's not. Somebody has to carry the torch. In, in, in America, like, is the more Southern you sound, the more Christian you are? Like, because that's what I'm getting from this movie. Amen. Hey, maybe sometime we could grab a lemonade. Hey, hell yeah, yeah brother! The torch. Be honest. Do you think Ty called his the torch? But the movie isn't quite done yet, because apparently Donald James Parker had already mined a bunch of other quotes that he didn't get to use, and so we're treated to this middle school recital of all these kids standing up one by one and awkwardly stumbling through these quotes from various scientists who are critical of evolution. T.N. Timizian from the Atomic Energy Commission said, Scientists who go about teaching evolution as a fact of life are great con men. And this part just keeps going. Albert <sighs> Einstein said that science without religion is lame. And going. Ernst Chain, Nobel, Nobel Prize winner of 1945 in medicine said, To postulate that the development and survival of the fittest is entirely a consequence. And going. Leo Tolstoy, the famous author, said, Most men can seldom accept even the simplest and most obvious truth. And go on! Evolutionist Richard Lawanton said, Evolutionist? It is not that the methods and institutions of science somehow compel us to accept a material explanation. And then finally, finally, we are treated to this totally unnecessary second ending scene where Ty goes back to the gym from the very beginning of the film and meets up with his old friend and Ty shows him the necklace that Michaela gave him and then we get the credits. Praise Gilgamesh. Overall, I give this whole movie a science teacher challenge level 1 out of 10. The entire thing is just an arduous and excruciating slog through the writer's masturbatory fantasies about his imaginary oppression and the witty retorts that he has to all the arguments he's having with himself in his head. Over and over, Donald shows that he's never learned anything about evolution or academia. His arguments and questions against evolution are freshman level Excuse at you're best, scientists and he fails and to scientific understand field. that half yeah. the point of higher education is to be exposed to new ideas and new worldviews. So the concept that this character would be chastised and ostracized by his university just because he's a creationist is ridiculous. I mean, he would certainly be expected to learn real science if he wanted to get a science degree, but asking big questions and challenging the status quo are major functions of higher education. In fact, if you don't have questions when you're learning something as big as evolution, 
you're probably not paying well enough attention. Like, I can easily think of over a dozen major ideals that shape who I am as a person that I either gained, or discarded, or leaned into, or tempered down, or put down for a minute and then picked up later over the course of my academic career, all because of the exposure to new ideas and the constant challenging of everything that I thought I knew. That is the real treasure that education gives you, and it is genuinely one of the most precious things in my life. And that's why I do this for a living. Because this dude's broken understanding of what education is, is immensely sad and horrifyingly common. Don't do dogma, kids. It'll fry your brain. As far as the movie itself is concerned, personally, I think it would have been a lot better if it had like a Marvel-style stinger, where it's revealed that the ex-boyfriend was actually an engineering student, and that sets up for the sequel, which is all about Ty fighting like an army of robots or something. But that's just me. I had a lot of fun making this video, so let me know in the comments below if you had fun watching it too. I know this wasn't exactly as educational as my usual content, but if enough people liked it, I might do another one again sometime. And with that, I'm Forrest Valkai. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and all the other stuff you do here on YouTube. Please exit through the gift shop on your way out, pick up one of these sweet t-shirts, have an awesome rest of your day, and never stop learning. Bye-bye! That was so good. Yeah, like, I can't, it's really hard to go into it because, like, everything, literally everything that the creationist said in the, um, in that as, as a reasoning for why evolution doesn't exist is provably false. Like, it, it, it it's very, they are not hard to debunk. Creationists are not hard to debunk. That's why, like, you know, the um, big brain, at, like, atheist community got so big back in the day. Like, the, the friggin' easy stuff to... It's easy to make fun of these people because they, they don't actually... They're actually not that smart when, uh, when, when it comes down to it. They're not really that good at um, critical thought. <sighs> yeah. There's not, not really much else you can say about it than that like it, it, they are just not that smart um but yeah so definitely check out forest valkai um on on the youtube utubbies uh like and subscribe to them um give them like a nice comment for the algorithm because yeah they they make <laughs> consistently funny and educational content um which is really really cool Making people believe Amazing Atheist was was smart. So wait, was Amazing Atheist the one that um, did the 180, as they say, um, in order to become less crap, or was that something else that I was thinking of? Like, because there was one of them who th where people were saying, "Oh, they're not so bad now. They're not so bad now." But then I kind of looked at them, and th they still believe a lot of the like anti-feminist BS <laughs> mm -hmm. and I did it we have ourselves a factory here this is what I was doing in the background I made a uh, starting factory that just makes um, like the basic, like basic first level logistics. Yay! Oh yeah, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. Um, yes. He was tweeting, girl, "Dick, girl, dick, girl, dick," and and J.K. Rowling was "Dick, girl, dick, girl, dick," and J.K. Rowling was arguing with with him. Oh, that just sounds so fucking dumb. <sighs> Love it when people like jump into conversations about like our rights and then just like mi are misogynist pieces of shit. You know, love it. You know, and then double down on it when they're called out for it. Good, good, good job, guys. Thank you for for nothing. Fucks.
I'll be done with this very shortly. Gonna end up soon. I just wanna get one red energy and then and then finish up. One red energy would be nice. Even though I'm wasting a lot of time doing like logistic stuff that I'm just gonna end up redoing very shortly, you know. But, you know, why not? <sighs> so whatever happened to my friend? Oh, my friend! Hello, my friend. Next, I need to build seventeen burners. Get some tasty transport belts. more yay yay wait for it Yay, we've got red science. Whoop, whoop, yo, yo. I don't know what why it means, but I need to launch more satellites. Damn, so it's going to take me a while to get up there. All right. So, what's this do? This is fuel processing. Process any chemical fuels into processed fuel. Interesting. Sand processing. Where do we get that from? Crushing, grinding, and filtering raw material effects. Oh, I make that from stone? Oh my gosh, this is like so different. <gasps> so cool. Tool belt. Expands my inventory. Nice. Nice. I don't know what to start with. Military would be cool, but stone wall would be very useful. Logistics, though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, interesting. It's not taking the um, coal out. That's an interesting thing. So normally they should be able to, like, um, send coal between each other. So. JK Rowling calls him the... Okay, this is five minutes. I'll give I'll give you five minutes. This will be it. This is five minutes for this for this cringe. I'm assuming, and then we'll uh, finish for the day. So I logged onto my Twitter today, and I saw that I was suddenly embroiled in this like firestorm of like all these different crazy people on me and stuff. And I was just like, "What I do? I don't know." Um, I saw that they'd resurrected a tweet from may 13th 2011 where i said i wish i was a jew and they said all kinds of like anti-semitic stuff they were talking about how 
like the Talmud allows pedophilia and how like it's disgusting and I need therapy all because I said I want to be a Jew. And uh, of course, these people are raging anti-Semites who just despise Jews. Um, and I was like, where did fuck? these people come from? Well, it turns out they come from J.K. motherfucking Rowling, author of the. <laughs> okay, he's just saying that. Girl dicks, pregnant men, girl dicks. I don't want to think about girl dicks. Woman dicks? Meh. But yeah, not girl dicks. Harry Potter books. Books I have read multiple times. Movies I have seen multiple times. She, I posted a, a tweet where I was like, pregnant men, girl dicks. Pregnant men, girl dicks. Why? Just bait for the chuds. Oh, okay. Just trying yeah. to trigger some chuds. But little did I know I was going to attract the queen of the chuds. Little did I know that my simple little bait tweet <laughs> was going to, to hook the queen of the turfs herself, JK motherfucking Rowling. And the best thing is she said, say what you like about gender ideology. You can't deny it's attracted some of the world's greatest thinkers. And that means that J.K. Rowling just called me one of the world's greatest thinkers. I mean, true, it was completely sarcastic and was meant to be like this withering, scorn-filled thing. But I immediately put that in my fucking bio. World's greatest thinker, J.K. Rowling. 100% true. She did say it. And even better than that, she found out about the fucking banana video. People keep telling me about the banana. I had no need or wish to know about the banana. Oh my God, I have peaked. This is it. This, it's not going to get any better than this. I cannot take this shit any. I thought the highest I was ever going to get was when I got international headlines for complaining about the size of Lara Croft's tits. But this is better than that. This tops that. This is next level. This is the most popular author probably alive today so he's just he's just like um stroking his his own he's stroking his ego over like um triggering jk rowling okay just decided to respond to my bait tweet with some withering british sarcasm and that's fucking beautiful. The only uh, thing that And and what did you do that? What would you, what did you do with that? It kind of mars this event is I'm fucking goddamn banned from Twitter again for 6 hours and 23 sorry, 6 days and 23 Why? hours. So just when things are getting fun, just when I've got a big old hate mob that I can agitate, that I can get pissed off at me, they fucking take away my Twitter again. <laughs> These fucking bastards, man. Uh, and they took it away for the stupidest goddamn reason. Because some psycho bitch was like, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I, I found that tweet where Matt Walsh was celebrating the fact that, um, that a, a pride parade in Florida was canceled. And he was like, yeah, good guys win again. I hate gay people. You know, his usual bigoted, intolerant, garbage horse shit. And I criticized him for it. And then some psycho bitch, no doubt finding me from J.K. Rowling, was like, um, hey, FBI, why don't you go arrest this fucking pedophile because he supports gay pride parades. Obviously, he's a pedophile. And I was just like, I, I added the FBI, too. I was like, yeah, at FBI, come arrest me for... Uh, saying something this dumb bitch doesn't like right and i'm the one who gets fucking shit canned for it six days oh is that it 23 hours i can't fucking tweet do you want to right when i get, do you want to put put what you set up on screen so we can see it <laughs> get the fucking godsend of jk rowling wasting her fucking time responding to my ass giving me a whole fucking menagerie of chuds that I can trigger and trigger and trigger some more. And lo and behold, I can't fucking do it because my Twitter is fucking suspended. <sighs> oh, well, still a beautiful day. Thank you so much.
<laughs> man. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I'm so happy that uh, people find it um, hilarious to use uh, trans people as uh, pawns in, in their games of chasing clout on the internet. Um, yeah. Cool. But you, you, you really triggered them. Cool. Like, wonderful. Like, I, I, our, our suffering is making you money. Cool. <laughs> Laugh if you want, like, you know, enjoy the media you consume, but, like, this isn't... This this ain't it, I guess. Cool. I, I'm not saying that The Amazing Atheist is good or bad, but it's just neutral. It's just, like, it's, it's secure the bag, I guess. Secure the bag if you want, if you can. It's just, uh, yeah. Huh. Cool. It's just Twitter. It's just Twitter stuff. I don't know. Whatever. You do you, mate. <laughs> uh... Cool. Uh, it's not. It's not the. It's not the amazing atheist's fault that uh, we're being. You know, it's not his fault that we're being fucked over in the world. And like, you know, it's it's not his fault that um, it's so easy to farm clout and make money off of our suffering. You know, and him not doing that isn't going to be any form of. Uh, it, it isn't going to help people's lives as much as you know capitalizing on it will. So secure the bag. But this ain't it. I guess. Yeah. Whatevs. Um, if you enjoy that kind of content, enjoy it. I say enjoy it. I mean, like, I do the same thing, like, on stream as well. I, like, show up the tweets of me getting, me arguing with someone, and I'm like, oh, I fucking own them. It's like, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. It is funny that uh, he managed to get no, JK Rowling to respond to him. That is funny. It would have been interesting to see what he'd do with that. Whether it would have been Vosh adjacent or not, but like, whatever. Um, have a good one, mate. But that is all the time I have for today. So until next time, um, no idea when exactly that'll be. Hopefully on a weekend. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, so is Shark Three O Zero, I guess. Um, I wouldn't say, but like, you know, yeah, whatevs, uh, and, and, you know, what does friend really mean when it comes to content creators at the end of the day as well, but focus on my face, focus on my face. Oh my gosh. This thing is like one of the most annoying, it, it, it's, it's like right here, whenever I'm sitting right here, it struggles, but yeah, until next time. Take care of yourself, take care of yourself, and take care of someone else, and, uh, yeah. I've really enjoyed hanging out with you. Bye-bye! <gasps>